Good morning. I like to call the code board for the month of October to order. Has everyone here had a chance to review the minutes? If, and if you have, do you have any motion? Uh, move to approve the minutes. Second. Okay. You want Just to do a roll call? To approve by Mr. Harrington, second by Mr. Gonzalez. And we vote. All in favor. And with the, all, all in favor. In favor. Aye. 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 Let's do the roll call. So we, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's on the record. What did, one, two, three. Roll call. There's so what, six of us? Okay. Uh, Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Gonzalez. Present. Ms. Roby. Here. Mr. Harrington. Here. Ms. Himes. Here. And Ms. Kundig. Uh, Ms. Kundig needs to be excused. And we would like to make... Go ahead. Okay. We'd like to get an excuse for Mrs. Kundig. For Ouija. Motion. Can I get a motion? Uh, um, a motion that we uh, uh, ex excuse our absence Second. Uh, due to a uh, family... Okay, is there a second? Yes, yeah, second. Second by Mr. Robertson. Okay. Um, so All in uh, favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's been approved. Okay. okay. Um, will our code officers please come forward to be sworn in? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, all the truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Here's our procedures. We will be calling cases by number and for the most part in order as they are listed on the agenda. If there are any attorneys or police uh, present, we will hear those cases first today. When your case is called, well, please come forward and be sworn in. Okay. Um, our first case. Uh, we have some announcements. Oh. Please. <laughs> Page number two, case number one, CEB 03-20-65 at 940 North Halifax is in compliance 10 to 2020. Page number three, case number eight, CEB 09-20-180 at um, at North Carolina parcel 52381807050 is in compliance 10 1 2020. Page uh, you, number. Excuse me, did yeah. you mention case number three and then say. Yeah. Number, page three? No, case, you mentioned case three and then said page number three, eight. Case three, uh, uh, case eight. Case three, page eight? Page three. Page three. Case, case number eight. In compliance with the uh, CEB 09-20-180 at the parcel on North Caroline Street is in compliance 10-1-2020. Um, page number seven. Case number 20. CEB zero. I'm sorry. Okay. Page number seven. Seven. Okay. Case number twenty. CEB zero nine dash twenty dash one sixty eight at five twenty seven Colfax Drive is in compliance ten one twenty twenty. Case number twenty one. CEB zero eight dash twenty dash one fifty eight at 703-701 West International Speedway Boulevard is in compliance 10-7-2020. Which one was that again, please? I'm sorry? Which one was that again, please? That is case number 21. Okay, thank you. Need me to read it again? No, no. Okay. Um, case number 28 on page 9. CEB 09-20-166 at 636 South Palmetto Avenue is in compliance 10-7-2020. Page number 11. 
Case number 34, CEB 10-20-187 at 324 324-322 Hobart Avenue is in compliance 10-6-2020. Case number 36, CEB 10-20-188 at 173 Kingston Avenue is in compliance 10-2-2020. Case number 37, CEB 10-20-189 at 420 Silver Beach Avenue is in compliance 9-30-2020. And that's it. As I said, we're gonna differ a little with our cases, and our first case is going to be. Will we start that? Do I need to disclose any ex parte communication? Oh, yeah. Is there anyone here that have any ex parte communication? No, ma'am. Okay. Okay, we now have case number 38, which is a Zoom case. Yes, ma'am. Case number 38 is a Zoom call. Case number 38, 38. page 12. Oh, okay. okay, there we go. Could you state your name, please? Daniel Phipps and Kimberly Phipps. Okay, can you raise your right hand, please? Right hand? Yes. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Fitzgerald. Good morning. Uh, Mike Fitzgerald. Daytona Beach Code Enforcement. My credentials are on file with the city. At this time, the property is in noncompliance, and I'm asking it to become into compliance by a next cutoff. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you. Is that Mike? Yes. Hi, I sent you pictures. We're 95% done. Yeah, uh, um, I'm asking for you to become into compliance by the next cutoff. So that'll give you something like 20 something days. Oh yeah, we, ha we only have a little bit more left. Okay. Okay, so what Mr. <clears throat> Fitzgerald is asking is that for the next cutoff. So move. Second. Aye. 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 Okay. You want to incorporate the motion? Do you need to retire motion? Just you can you put that in the minutes. I'm sorry. I said, I, do you need her to do the entire motion, or do you go that? You'll go ahead. Yeah. No, that's okay. that's fine. I'm I'll I'm good. That's good. Um, it's easier okay. time. And our next. Okay. Um, okay, and then Ms. Phillip, you did understand that it's the next cutoff, which is it's new. Mm -hmm. 11 yep. 4. Okay. Okay. Do we need to disconnect? I can't hear. Uh, oh, she sent you. No, that's the, that's the conclusion of your hearing. It's the next cutoff. And you have November. You have until November fourth to correct the issues. Oh, okay, great. That's all come in compliance. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Can we leave? Do we leave? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, you found them in non-compliance. Yes. Okay. okay. They were fine. Yes. Okay. I just missed it, so I just want to make sure. <clears throat> The rest of the motion, they will face a fine, or that's what I asked. Correct. What was that? Correct. If they're not in compliance by November the fourth, they will be back for the consideration of the imposition of a fine. So he need to amend his motion. I'm sorry. No, that's you already. I just didn't hear okay. it. Okay. Now y'all have to speak up. I can't hear very well. Okay, I forgot you. And then case number forty-two, we do have a couple of attorneys. If we would like to move up. 
Okay, our next case is case number 42, um, CEB 10-20-192. The mean. Okay. State your name, please. Sarah Beth, are you able to hear me? I'm not sure that this is on. Yep, there you go. Okay. We were having some trouble hearing outside, so I just wanted to make sure that I was speaking really closely to the microphone so that you can hear me. Um, my name is Sarah Metz, and I represent the owners of the property who are um, 12 heirs of the person who pre previously owned it, a Vietnamese man. Um, 11 of those 12 heirs live in Vietnam. One of them we found out after the original notice was deceased. I'm sorry, I, I should let Ms. Kirk speak first. Okay. Uh, good morning, Sarah Kirk, inspector with the city. Uh, this case I opened um, in March of 2020. I had to post the property. It was a complaint, uh, complaint driven. I've received several complaints about the property. Um, do we have pictures? Yes, there they go. So it is in bad shape. Uh, they were able to, there was a vehicle parked there. Uh, they were able to get rid of the vehicle. It was an inoperable vehicle. Um, I did speak with the attorney, Mr. Rick Meyer, and I understand the situation. However, with the continuous complaints, I gave as much time as I was able to. And, and the property has just recently been condemned on September 22nd of 2020. So I'm just asking for an order of noncompliance till the next cutoff. Okay. Jim, did we swear in the witness? Was I'm sorry? She's an attorney. Oh, okay. She's that. Okay, we're here from you now. Thank you. Um, as Ms. Kirk said, this is a property where um, there were complaints on it from earlier this year. Um, we have been in the process of trying to get this property sold to someone who is going to rehab this property fully. Um, the main issue right now is the condemnation order, which we plan to appeal because we believe that it is able to be basically gutted and rebuilt and to make sure that the um, city doesn't have to pay for the demolition and to get fines that will unfortunately probably never be paid because of the situation with the 11 heirs in Vietnam, none of whom speak English and are difficult to communicate with. Uh, but one of the things that we've been doing since, um, it was actually a paralegal in our firm, Ms. Rick Meyer, who was speaking with Ms. Kirk previously, she has uh, contacted and we have hired an attorney in Vietnam to assist with the communication with these heirs. Because the whole idea of what we're trying to do with this property is to help those heirs to sell it to one of two buyers who is very hot to purchase the property and um, understand the nature of the violations and that they need to be corrected as soon as possible. Um, we understand that the property is in non-compliance. We're not contesting the compliance issue, uh, but what we are asking for is more time than simply to the next um, uh, hearing cutoff. So we are asking for 120 days. The reason for the extended time period is that in order for these heirs to be able to sell the property, they must get a tax identification number as a foreign seller from the IRS. The international division of the IRS is typically a couple of weeks backed up um, due to the coronavirus pandemic that we've been in. Uh, the international department of the IRS has been backed up for several additional weeks. So we're looking at, based on what our uh, CPAs have told us, about an eight week time period for the IRS turnaround to allow us to sell the property and to get that property back into compliance. So what we're asking for is 120 days, which we believe will cover the estimated delays with the IRS, uh, to finalize coordination with the attorney in Vietnam to get all of the heirs signing the deed, and then that closing for one of two purchasers um, who will then, and I'm, my understanding from um, our real estate department is that those purchasers are ready to take action on the property immediately. But we do just need a little extra time to make sure that that happens. And I can assure you that the, the actions that we have been able to take, such as mowing the grass, removing that car, um, we have been doing at least as much as we could um, with the resources that are available. So we're asking for that additional time, just given the extraordinary circumstances with the coronavirus issues um, delaying the IRS. And we believe that that 
would provide reasonable time to um, get the property sold, get somebody else taking care of this property as opposed to the city having to expend its resources. Couple of questions. Yes, sir. What, uh, did you have a condemnation hearing? N not to my knowledge. Um, I was given the information on the condemnation about two days ago. I believe the one heir that lives in the United States who lives up in Massachusetts received a letter and she sent us a photograph of the uh, of that letter, which I have then pulled from the the um, code enforcement and the building um, website. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to view most of the documentation on the code website because when you click on the link, it comes up with um, like webnings gobbledygook. I'm not really sure what it was. So what I've been able to review is the uh, letter from the chief building officer um, with the notice of condemnation and the ability to appeal within 20 days. And I believe the deadline on the appeal is Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, and we are preparing an appeal for that. Um, I will say this, if we do not get that appeal overturned, or at least the order of condemnation stayed, then we won't be able to sell the property. So um, the request for extension of this board would kind of be moot, but we would certainly be in touch with Ms. Kirk and let her know. Obviously, I think the, the two offices within uh, the city would probably be in communication with each other as well. But the idea is if we are able to show the, the, um, in the appeal that the, excuse me, the purchaser will be able to rehab this property in a swift manner, um, then we would be able to sell that property and we could do that within the time frame that I've requested. That's the goal. Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, yes, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, is this case taken through a probate with an appointed administrator? Originally, yes. And in fact, my office didn't, we were closing the estate in um, early March when Ms. Kirk spoke with Ms. Rickmeyer originally, and we believed that the probate was going to be closed out. Um, a couple of weeks later, I want to say it was about a month later, my office learned that one of the 12 heirs had died intestate in Vietnam, a Vietnamese citizen. So what we are doing with that is a summary procedure, which is a 60-day process. Now, the thing about that is, though, that even though it's in probate, this was a homestead property, and it did not require going through the, the estate, meaning that the estate is not the owner. The individuals are the owners, and those individuals have to get the tax ID number, which is why it's more difficult than just the personal representative um, signing a deed. Another question. If it's homesteaded, somebody had to be a resident of Florida. Yes, there was a, a resident of Florida that lived there. Um, that resident, I believe, was an immigrant, and when he passed, the only heirs that he had lived in Vietnam, and the one in Massachusetts, who is an American citizen and is the only one that speaks English. So the other, the other part of the delays is every time we communicate with them, we are having to get the documentation translated, which is a few days to a week or so turnaround time. Um, but I can assure you that we have been diligently working towards getting this uh, sale to occur. So we just need a little more time. Uh, I'd like, Ms. Kirk, what is the recommendation of the city? Madam Chair, members of the board, Anthony Jackson, attorney for the city of Daytona Beach. Um, the city is, um, in light of us not having a meeting in December, we, we believe going out 120 days is just too far, but we are willing to, or at least our recommendation would be, uh, seeing what things look like at, at, in January uh, for a couple of reasons. One, as she mentioned, the, uh, the process for the uh, condemnation is a whole different board, a whole different process. We don't we're not um, hand in hand. So whatever happens there will one impact wherever, which direction they're going. But in addition to that, it's, as you see, it's, it's an eyesore and it, you know, whatever yeah. can be done, we really want something done. And, and so we, we know that they're pushing and doing what they can. We want it to just be done as, as uh, with as much uh, ex, uh, uh, expedited as much as they can expedite. And I, know, and I understand what she's saying about the conditions and the circumstances and dealing with the, the uh, agencies uh, in this, under these conditions. But uh, our desire is to see this at least not, at least have them, us back before in uh, January and hopefully to have it resolved. Um, I mean, obviously, one solution is is a, is a demolition. We know that there's some issues on that, but 
uh, again, that'll all be resolved. Even the fact, the question of whether it can be rehabbed probably will be resolved uh, and as they deal with the issues with the uh, other board. Do we know if this is secure, Tony? Uh, say that. Is the property secure? Yeah. Um, that would be a question for. Uh, yes. The, okay. At one point, the rear door was ajar, and I contacted Ms. Rick Meyer, and they promptly secured it. Okay. So you're and recommending asked, 90 days then at this point? Yeah. Back uh, in we, we probably would have asked for 60 if we were meeting in, in uh, December, but yeah, 90 is fine, and we'll, yeah. we'll work with that. Uh, that's the motion okay. I was going to make I, was that we grant them 90 days. Instead of the 120 we're, days. Are we still having discussion? Yes. Yes. I, I want to see the uh, demolition uh, hearing uh, be concluded before we go giving any long-term thing because this has the potential to be handled a, a year from now from what I'm hearing. Oh, we've got to get this. We've got to get that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's... Let's keep it to 60 days and wait for the hearing. If the hearing rules against them, then it's moot anyway. We're not having a meeting in December. We're not having a, okay, then it's January. Yeah. Mm. So I just, yeah. I just feel that this has yeah, the I kind of agree with you. To that. drag out forever. Yeah, I agree with you. It seems like it's a prolonged so we can sell the property. That's what I'm hearing. Uh, give us time to sell the property. So well, they can't I, sell it till after the demolition right. hearing. Well, I'm prepared to make a motion. Okay, the chair will entertain a motion to find it in non-compliance and. Uh, well, I'll make a motion, the motion that we find the property in non-compliance and give them 90 days to come into compliance. I'll second that. Okay, it has been moved and properly second by Mr. Robertson. All in favor? You want to make sure all in clear favor. that these public compliance have a cutoff date in yeah. January and to come back for a hearing mm -hmm. to impose fine in January? January yes. 6th, Anyways. 2021. May I take the vote? Okay. And all in you... favor? None opposed? No. All was in favor. Just, just a, are you part of the Mets family, the Claire? Did you, is your name Metz? Yes, yes, sir. That's my mother-in-law. It's your mother-in-law. Okay, <laughs> just wondering. Okay, so you're to return one six twenty one. Thank you, ma'am. Just one, one other point, if I, what, and I, you normally would say this, but just make sure that it stays clean and secure in the inner room. Oh well, yeah, that's why I brought um, as part of the uh, order. That so, means clean and secure. Yes. Uh, I mean, it's best that it could be clean. Yeah. Right. Yes. And clean enough. I'm just looking at that porch. Too. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate your time. I'll email you a copy of the case file. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Now, June have given me a list, and it's for the people that are here. And Ms. Himes, most people have arrived in between since. So if you want to just continue order. as with okay. the agenda as it is, you won't miss okay, good. very many. We're now on case 1 CEB 0320-65, Kathy Mount Multipolu. That one's in that, that was right. right. That's in compliance That's right. on 10-2. Okay, 10 two. Okay, the next case, case two, is CEB 02-20-39, Neil and Cora Hitchman. The respondent is not present. Not present, okay. Uh, my name is Mark Jones. Neighborhood services credentials are on file. Uh, this case opened back in December. Uh, the property failed a real inspe rental inspection back in July. Uh, last month, you gave them an additional month to bring the property into compliance. I received an email yesterday from the property manager. Uh, the work has not yet been completed, and she asked if she should be attending the hearing. I did highly recommend that she did it yet attend the hearing due to this being up for fines. Uh, this is four rental units that are occupied. Staffs are requesting a fine of $100 a day with a cap of 15. 
Okay. I'll make a motion that oh. we accept the inspector's uh, recommendation and impose the fine. Second. Effective. Effective today. 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 Yeah. Right, today. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Who was the second on that motion? Oh. I was. Thank Mr. you, Gonzales. Okay. Okay. Three. Case number three, CEV 07 20 106, Rosalind Page. Can you state your name and address, please? Yes, I'm Rosalind Page. My address is 5548 Blue Tick Drive, Orlando, Florida. And I have my daughter, Carla Morris, who will be speaking for me. Okay. Could you raise your hands, please? Excuse me? The person who's speaking also needs to raise their right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We're here for Mr. Jones first, please. Yes, this case was open for not having a rental license. There are four mm -hmm. units uh, at this development. Uh, they did apply for a rental license. Uh, the city uh, manager has denied that application due to them having a fine or excuse me a, a bill for a demolition that was done on the property and until that was is uh, brought into compliance they will not issue the application for the rental license the properties are occupied uh, they have been renting them without a rental license uh, staff is requesting a fine of hundred dollars a day with a cap of 15. okay and now Ms. Page they have a bill for demolition of that property? Uh, no, there was an, a second Another bill. half of that property. Uh, my understanding is it was back in 2007 wow. when they agreed yeah. to uh, have the city pay for the demolition and then reimburse the city. And they, and they have not yet reimbursed the city. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Carla Morris. I'm Rosalind's daughter, and this is my grandmother, Ruth Dew Williams, who's the original owner of the property. And I have emails here. We did, as uh, the gentleman stated, we just were aware that the property needed a rental application on March the 24th. I have email correspondence where I was originally emailing to get information on what we needed to do to bring the um, property up to compliance. However, we do have a lien on the property, as the gentleman stated, of $9,665 for a demolition that happened in 2011, not 2007. However, my grandmother was set to be put on payments for the, for the demolition. However, she was told, and I don't have any documentation, when she made the first payment back in September of 2011, she was told that she didn't have to pay the lien until she sold the property. And so therefore, that's why the payments were not made on the property. Subsequently, from what I'm understanding, gathering, looking backwards at this, in 2017, there was a change in, um, a, I guess, a law here that those that were grandfathered in that could rent properties as my grandmother has been an owner of, of the properties even from my grandfather John Dew since the 40s and the 50s that this new application process started in 2017. At that time, my mother took over my grandmother uh, estate and have, my grandmother is in hospice right now. We actually brought her out of hospice to come up here. And she wasn't aware that in 2017 that indeed there had to be some new form of a rental application. So subsequently, I contacted Amy Cristobal in the accounting office to find out what we could do to either get the payments reinstated on the lien so that we could go forward with the application. 
these emails here are from me going back and forth from Jerome McCoy, who was the former inspector, Karen Bonham, who is his assistant, and now Tony Evans, who just took the case over. And we were waiting for Mr. Morris, who's the city manager, and subsequently um, Mr. Chisholm, I believe, is the deputy um, city manager, to give us um, a, a reinstatement of the payments to, to pay the lien off. On October the, well, today is the 8th, on last evening at 445, we just found out from Mr. Jones that Mr. Morris didn't, what, does not want us to make the payments. He wants the total amount. So what I'm working on right now to bring the property up to compliance, we, we've already made the application in April. The business tax receipt is no problem. We can go pay that right now. We were waiting for the city manager to let us know if he would put the um, property back on payments for the lien. He, he may not do that. He said that he would not made a call to his secretary yesterday because I don't think he understood the essence of what we were trying to do. What we were trying to do is get it back to make the payment so we could go forward with the application because my grandmother was not aware that she needed to make the payment. So where we are now is I'm in contact with Amy to see if we can get the interest off of it because there's about $6,900 worth of interest that's accrued on the lien and just make the $9,665 payment for the lien or get payments. If they're not going to allow us to make the payments, then we need to pay it off and then go forward with the application so that they can go out and reinspect the property for the application, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, <coughs> Mr. You said Mr. Morris said. M Mr. Okay. Mr. Jones, when I emailed Mr. Jones, in, on September the 9th, he wrote me and said, Ms. Morris, Inspector McCoy is not with the department now and I'm handling this case. I see no other violations and notices except the case that CE 20172771 for not having a rental license. It's good to hear you are proceeding with the rental application I do not see the application yet in the system, but I will keep checking. What I basically was asking him, we, we're waiting, we want to move forward. That's what all these correspondents, we're not, not trying to address the issue. We just was waiting on uh, Kim and zoning to sign off on the application, the rental application. Okay. Kim is in zoning. She contacted the city manager to see if we could get the payments for the lien. So that was what was holding up the application. Okay, then can I ask Mr. Jones, what is the recommendation of the city? Well, the recommendation of the city was a $100 a day fine with a cap of 15. I did receive uh, the telephone call from uh, Kim and Zoning yesterday afternoon uh, telling me what the, that they were not going to accept a, a payment process uh, on the lien that it would need to be paid in full. So the city manager was not going to approve the application. Uh, the challenge we have here is they've been renting without a rental license. Uh, it appears since uh, the rental program started, um, and we're requesting a fine of $100 a day. Okay. Are there any questions so from the board? So moved. Okay. Mr. Harrington has made uh, a motion. I have a question. Yeah, I had a question yeah. too. <laughs> okay. Let's get a second then. Uh, I think Did we you, handled Is there a second on that? Excuse me, second. just one second. Is there a second on Mr. Harrington? Okay, it dies for a like. Mr. Gonzalez, a second? No, he didn't. No, I have a oh. question. Of course. Yeah. question. Okay. Is there, I, was there a second? No. Okay. I feel like a second. I just wanted to know from the lawyers if. Uh, legally the essence of what the lady said is true and if we determine if we go ahead and impose a fine and she does everything fairly quickly can we come back and uh you know just uh, knock the fine off or not or are we locked yeah. in what well, are you saying what i'd like to know more you, this agreement that was made back 
many years, 2011, that you could pay it in, in installments. Is, that, is there a written document that says that? I have not seen it, no, sir. Okay. You, Mayor? I couldn't hear you. Yes, do you have? Could you repeat your question, please, sir? He's asking, do you have documentation that states that you can pay it $100 per month, I guess? I don't have, I talked with Amy, they actually, in, in accounting, they okay. see where that, you can make the payments for the lien. That was what I was trying to work on, and that's why we're not, that's why the application was being held up. It wasn't being held up no, because no, we didn't want to pay asked, it. Then did you have documentation on that? Amy in that accounting has so the documentation. Past, the past one, the, your grandmother the past. had the first payment plan. Yes, ma'am. They have, they can see it in the system. Didn't, yes. you, didn't you say she made one payment? She made one payment, so, but was told she's 99 years so old. The, she so was told that, excuse me, sir. She was told before that, this was before the application process came into play in 2017. She was told at the sale of the property, which is true, that when you sell the property, you can, you can pay a lien off. She wasn't aware that it would cause an issue until we came up with this issue that there's an application procedure now that was in place subsequently to what okay. the when the but demolition the was in place. The fact that she made one payment indicates she knew that she had an obligation to pay. Yeah. Uh, but she was also told, stuff. And, 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 and the fact that we're here to try to rectify it speaks volumes. The fact that I have all of these correspondences here that we were trying to move forward with the application process shows volumes as well that we're here to try to save the property and do the right thing as citizens of Daytona Beach. Okay, June. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Madam Chair, if, if I could just answer... Um, uh, Mr. Robertson's question, I, okay. I guess part of that question was, um, I guess one is, do we have a policy that says that she can't pay if, if she has this outstanding? And yes, we do. Um, and I don't know the answer to the question of whether or not if she got into a payment plan, would that open up her ability to uh, get a rental license? I don't know that answer. And maybe uh, one of the inspectors do, or maybe she's been told that if she gets into a a, um, a payment plan that should be able to not, then move forward with the rental license. Um, there was one more aspect of your question I wanted to answer. I just lost it. The lien review she process. The fine and she rectifies things fairly quickly. Can we uh, change our mm -hmm. mind basically yeah. later? Yeah. yeah. Of, of course, all of making a lien review. Yeah. Well, I mean, always yeah. we can impose a fine huh. and then we can come back later for a, a, a lien review and, and consider whatever was said. In fact, if it happens within 30 days, you can actually have a reconsideration if something was to happen. So that's something that, that's always available. Um, and, and I guess the, the other question would be, you know, always asking if there's the thought of, of somehow utilizing property would the fine have an impact on the ability to utilize property to get the funds to pay whatever they intend on paying. I have a question. Are you, if they doesn't say it goes before the city manager again and he says, no, I'm not going to do the payment plan, are you prepared to pay the, the $9,665? Yes, we are prepared to pay the 9000 That's what we were working on is to try to see if we could work through the interest. The interest is what was accruing on there, on unawares. And so if he will not do the payment plan, then we will pay the 9665 I'd like to make a motion then. Um, well, I, I, I had some earlier, so I had a question for the attorneys, too, uh, if I may, uh, as part of our continued discussion. Uh, the question is, we're like in a quagmire here. We're, we're city representatives, city managers, city representatives. We're getting ready to find them because the city manager's saying, I won't grant you the rental and the issue, rental license, and the issue is rental license. So, I mean, are we within a clear legal bounds that we can find in this case? 
I think Mr. Senior can answer that, but yes, I believe you we certainly are. are. You certainly are. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. But I think that maybe Ms. Roby might have an answer for us. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we um, go to the next cutoff to get the recommendation from the city manager about the payment, and that will give them the time to pay the $9,665 to the city and Mr. Jones to go out and check the property. I'll second it. So you're okay. asking for the city manager to give us a letter? Well, to tell Mr. Jones at least. Uh, whether no, I think it should be in writing. To us. Uh, give us. Give us a written thing that uh, they're not granted the rental license because they haven't paid the fine. And so I, you're I would agree to it. If without, okay. without that information, we start all over again in the same argument. Well, I would think that they would bring it. They got the money to pay it. They pay it. Bring us the receipt showing that But he has pay. to agree that yeah. they can forward, if they put them on a payment plan, he has to agree that they're going to issue them the, he's the told, license evidently, on the payment right, plan. Wait, well, well, he thought, told them no payment plan. He but, told them to pay the fine. Your motion, Ms. Rovery, was on that they, within the next 30 days, they paid the 900 Nine thousand. Nine thousand yeah. uh, dollars. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know that that is the fine. She's saying that that was the original lien. Oh, there is okay. interest on it as well, and that's what she's disputing at this moment is that she doesn't want to pay the interest. Yeah, uh, I didn't say I didn't want to pay it. I said that I wanted to work out. I'm, I'm cooperative. Amy has been like awesome, so we've been working through. But she, we put the discussion of the interest on hold until Mr. Morris responded back last night. So it's not that I'm saying I don't want to pay the 9965 She said, she even agreed. She said, let's see if we could work out the interest for you to help you out. That's right. all. And, and okay. I, I'm sorry, I, yeah, I, I phrased that too harshly. I meant that's the discussion that's occurring yes, sir. is what to do about that interest. Right. And, uh, and, and, I and if think, I can, yeah, I think some clarification would be if, if there's a motion to amend to the next cutoff, I don't think you want to lock it on uh, what money she's paying or anything, but if to, the payment but, plan but, or not. But you can lock it on whether or not certain things occur, like right? what, what, as yeah. he's indicated, whether or not there would be uh, a response from the city or if there's some actions you need her to take. I, I don't know yeah. if we want to lock yeah. it on the, the right. no, amount of money yeah. paid. Mr. Which you know, I, I, you put that in a motion? You, you yeah, I did be, second the motion. Yeah. To be I'm correct. sorry if I can mm -hmm. just finish one thing. Okay. Generally, it would be uh, that she come into compliance, okay. and right. so y'all can yeah. define that by giving her some direction on which what she can, what, what y'all are looking okay. for. But her compliance ultimately is still that it's going to be paid or that she's going to have a rental license. Okay. And so, if there's an alternative that allows her to get a rental license such as some of the things we discussed, and she works that out, then that's what you're allowing her the time for. And if she, and if she can't, then you probably want her to report back on the efforts that she's made, and you can then determine if those were reasonable or sufficient, or if, you, if you're finished with the, uh, the, the, the subject. That's, that's just my point. I, I would agree that we find them in noncompliance for no rental license with the guidance that they clear up any of the issues that are forbidding them from getting that license. If that's paying the fine, that's their problem. It's not ours. All we know is that they are not, do not have a rental license. Ms. Um, Roby, is that satisfaction with you to state it yeah, as he that's, said? That's, okay. And I still second that? that motion. Nope. So okay. you're, we're going to amend, amend the next the, cutoff? Yeah, the next, to the next okay. cutoff with um, the city manager, written letter from the city no. manager. No, no, no. no. She'll, Just we don't amend need it, it to she the next it. cutoff. Yeah. And okay. then they, so you know. you're amending to the next cutoff. For right. compliance. Or, compl or compliance. compliance. Or be returned to the next no. meeting. So next for time when she comes, up to she'll have the letter. Per day. Yes. Okay, got it. You have a second on that? Yeah. Second. Yeah. Second is mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> you're, hard to, you're hard to hear. Uh, Four second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Any opposed? No opposed. Okay, Ms. Page, you have uh, the next cutoff to complete that um, payment. That's when November is, the fourth. The and then contact Mr. Jones. November fourth. November fourth. November fourth. We come yes. here. 
Uh, yes. The meeting is actually on November the 12th. The cutoff is November 4th. Mm -hmm. Cutoff number 4th. The meeting is the 12th. We come and show you the receipt of the lien yes. payment. Yeah. Show Mr. Okay. Mark. He'll, he'll Mark. explain it. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Okay. Our next case is case number 4, CEV 04-20-78. Marie S. Thornton. She is here. State your name and address, please. Marie Thornton, 619 Mulberry Street, Daytona Beach, Florida, okay. 32114. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we're here for Mr. Garcia first. Uh, good morning, Inspector Garcia uh, with the City of Daytona Beach. Uh, credentials on file. Um, if you remember, this is the property that... Um, you guys were voting on giving more time. Mm -hmm. I've been by it uh, several times uh, to do reinspections and found that there has been no change. Um, I spoke to um, the, the owner, Miss Thornton, recently, and uh, she stated that she had just purchased the paint and uh, that she was doing installing some, putting some bricks under the house or something like that. So I explained that, being that there's no. Uh, progress. Uh, we're asking for a fine of two hundred dollars a day. Cap that ten thousand. Okay. Are there any questions? Well, excuse me, Mrs. Thornton. Yes, the father and son that I'm going to have uh, paint. I'm going to get him to do it, but I'm trying to get on a payment plan with him so I can do it because he's going to charge me um, between five hundred and six hundred dollars to paint it. And I don't have that, you know, out front to pay him to paint it because I only get paid once a month. So I'm trying to get something set up, but he didn't get back with me on the phone. I'm going to try and call him today to get something set up so I can get it painted. Okay. Are there any questions from the board? This was done in 7-18-19. Yes, I have a question. Uh, Ma'am, why has it taken so long to do something about these violations? I didn't have no money. No money to do it. And Mr. Garcia, <laughs> this is a single family. It looks... Yes, it is. I only have yeah, one I, income. I also want to point out that, um, as you can see in the pictures, the, there was a, a, some kind of roofing done. She said it was a patch job, but you can see in the previous pictures there was um, some tarp, I mean, uh, some uh, mm -hmm. tarp on the exterior. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. See back here on the right and also yep. on the other side on the left there was some. And then when she made repairs, um, I didn't see any permits applied for, mm -hmm. but uh, you could see the repairs that were made, the new uh, portion that's put on there, like mm -hmm. the... Um, uh, some type of uh, rolling paper or something that was on it. And I didn't see any. I did see um, they had a permit back in 2017, and it was finaled in uh, December 2017. So it, it's that's something different than what she's doing, what was going on now. Okay. So is there a recommendation for noncompliance and the... How much you said a day? Uh, two hundred dollars a day, capped at ten thousand. Two hundred per day. Can um, I get a I second? I'd like to make a motion to reduce the fine down. I mean, she doesn't have the money to pay the painter, um, so I guess since we're in the fine stage, um, I don't know, maybe fifty dollars a day until it gets done. Second. Okay. It has been moved and properly second. All in favor? Capped what? 10,000? Capped at 10,000, yeah. Capped at 10,000. Effective today? Effective today. 50 per day, capped at 10. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Was there a second? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I, I didn't. All righty. Ms. Thornton, there has been love at a fine of $50 per day. 
until you're in compliance. Okay. Okay, thank you. Our next case is case number five. Uh, Ms. Thorne, you can get with Mr. Garcia later on any questions you have. Okay. okay. Case number five, CEB 04-20-82. Pentagon and Eva Manmain. Okay, 820 North Beach Street is a property that's uh, just uh, south of Mason Avenue. And it was a property that had some numerous violations on the exterior. And um, they chose to demolish it, which they did. They pulled the permit and they had it demolished. Um, you're going to see in a couple pictures at the end uh, where it's demolished. Mm -hmm. um, it's now gone, but in the process, they damaged the city sidewalks. Um, also, they did not uh, final the permit. So we're asking to amend to the next cutoff to allow the permit to be finaled and repair those uh, damages that they made to the sidewalk. Okay. I'm a it has been moved and properly seconded by Mr. Aye. Robertson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Case number six, CEB 06-20-123. Richard T. Hayden, Estate and Mark McQueen. State your name and address, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, Chair Members. Mark D. McQueen. 111 Congress Avenue, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32114. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay, the 115 Congress, the, uh, the property has now changed owners. Uh, they now own the property, and um, they have applied for permits. It's been applied for on September 4th. Um, hasn't been issued yet that I can see recently, uh, but we're asking to amend to the uh, January cutoff to allow them to uh, make the repairs necessary and have that final inspection, uh, have the permit final. Okay. Do you want to give them 60 days? Yes. Uh, well, we don't no, have a December meeting. The December, yeah, we don't have, yeah, we don't have this. That's why I said January 4th. So it's nine. Uh, January, January cutoff. With it. I know. I'm we have a November meeting, but we don't. But the apartment hasn't been approved yet. No. Okay. Is there anyone living there? Uh, not in, no. No. Okay. And they live next door. Okay. You know what the holdup is? Long yeah. Time. It took a long time. To yeah, I would just like to give you a little progress report on where I'm at with this. I have an architect that is doing this. Give me just a moment. You want to know what was the holdup? Yeah. We can tell it. Okay. Yeah, I have the architect is contracted. He is doing the drawings for the permit set of drawings. I was hoping to have them today when I came, but he has not yet called me. I have applied for financing for a $30,000 loan, which will do the complete repair of the home and bring it up to occupied standards. So I'm just waiting on my architect that will be submitted with my permit application. Hopefully then I'll have my permits, then my loan, and then work can begin. I, th I, thought, okay, okay. I thought you said that permits were applied for. Yes. Uh, yeah, it was applied for on uh, September the 4th. But he hasn't mm -hmm. submitted the, all of the paperwork necessary? I guess they're waiting on it. Uh, I'm just waiting on the blueprints to come from the architect. I had a very hard time acquiring an architect that would do a drawing like this. But I finally found one, thank the Lord. Someone gave me a, a lead on one. And now he is in the process of finishing them up. Well, we could do a next cutoff okay. and see where we're at. Uh, I don't mind next. doing January. OK, do we have a motion for noncompliance to the next cutoff? I'll second. OK. I'll second. 
Oh shoot, I missed that. Um, Sorry. Okay. Oh, I thought you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I. Oh, you did too. What are you pointing? Did you me? make a motion? Okay. I didn't make a motion. Okay. Okay. I, all I is said is I could live with. Yes, yes. yes. Mr. Robinson and Mr. Gonzalez made the motion. <laughs> Mr. Robinson seconded. <laughs> yes. And that was to amend, amend the cutoff, the, which is but, no for ninety days. That was January. That's right. Mm -hmm. One, which is January 6, 2021. So it isn't the cutoff, it's the January cutoff. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. January 6, 2021. Because we don't have December. Okay. And did we vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Aye. Any opposes? Which no, everyone okay. said yes. Okay, Mr. McQueen. You have the extension of 90 days, January 6th. Thank you, Madam Chair and board members. I appreciate that very much, and uh, I'm hoping that work will be well underway by January. Okay. Have a great day. Okay. Case number 7, CEB 0720108, Robert and Katina Hart. Could you state your name and address, please? Katrina Hart. 324 Michigan Avenue in Daytona Beach. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. We're here for Mr. Garcia. Yes, uh, 324 Michigan. Uh, I spoke to the owner yesterday and uh, still did not be able to do a uh, reinspection in the property, uh, requesting a $350 day fine, capped at 15000 the same request as I did uh, the prior. And this was the one that had to be amended because uh, she wasn't able to, um, she was here, but she wasn't able to uh, speak. Okay. Ms. Mm. Hart. Yes, ma'am. Would you like to say anything? Um, the house, um, the only thing that we, I have to finish is like the painting on the outside and I just got to get smoke detectors on the inside. That was like the, the, on the papers that he said that I had to complete and that was it. But I just started back working and me and my husband separated. So I'm the one trying to get the house together. Okay. Are there any questions? The I have a question for Mr. Garcia. Mr. Garcia, what was the last time you were out there? Well, I was out there yesterday, but I was not able to go inside. I just spoke to her in the in the street. She oh, okay. she lives she resides across the street from there. Oh. But this is this is a, a a property that the police had called me to. Okay. I went inside and they had uh, very as you can see in the pictures, we had stairs that were damaged, we had walls that were damaged. There was uh, a lot of um, exposed wires. There was I mean you can see the outlets, the doors that were closed, I couldn't even get into some of them. Um, it, it was very, ex very extensive issues, uh, safety issues that, uh, and uh, see exposed wires on the ceiling. Um, so I have not been back to that property inside since. But no one is living there, right? Uh, well, she had a brother that was I, there. I have, I have um, my cousins, they live in there. The reason, that looks like that, because my brother was standing there and I had to get him out of there. Me and him got into a big thing and I had to get him out of there. But my cousin, them, they stayed up. And they're helping me get the house together. But like I said, the only thing I have to finish is like the painting of the outside of the house. Right. And I got to get smoke detectors. So um, I don't know how much longer that's going to take. Cause like I said, I just started back working cause I, um, I did get, I did test positive for the COVID. So I am just getting back to work. Do you have any Mr. pictures of, all, of this work that you did inside? No, I didn't know. I, I you come and say that you've done something that, uh, you have some, something that shows us you did that. Um, also, if I may, um, permits need to be electrical permits need to be applied for. As you can see, if he goes back to see this wiring here, the, mm -hmm. It's it's all exposed. I mean, it, it, there really there's a lot of other issues. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that's what I was going to bring up. I mean, there's if there has been work in here, I don't think the inspector has been allowed to come in and inspect it, see the progress. 
um, unless he's testifying otherwise. But I don't show that any permits have been pulled, and there is clearly work that requires permits. Okay. Mr. Garcia, is there electric hooked up to the building? Do you know? There, there was. Well, I, I don't know if there was power. I believe there was lighting as one end, but I did go into daytime, so I'm not positive on that. I moved I mean, to. It looks like a real uh, public safety issue with the electrical. Well, that's why I said it was a safety issue because oh. of the electrical. I move to accept the uh, code enforcement officer's recommendation and fine. And fine them and non compliant. Okay, it has been moved by Mr. Harrington, second by Mr. Gonzalez, to accept um, Mr. Garcia's recommendation of 350 per day. That's to, correct. To a maximum of 15,000? Correct. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Mrs. Mrs. Hot has been moved for a fine of 350 per day until compliance. All right. Mm -hmm. Case number eight, CEB 0920-180. Alice Hill is in compliance as of 10-1. Case number nine, CEB 0719-148, Andrea Anderson. Okay. State your name and address, please. My name is Andrea Anderson, and my address is 501 North Keat Street, Daytona Beach, Florida. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. We're here from Mr. Fitzgerald. Good morning. The property remains in noncompliance. Okay. And uh, she's going to give a uh, information on Rebuild Florida. I did call Rebuild Florida, and they said they were unable to give me any information other than she is, the, the property is under their consideration. Mm. Thank you. Okay, just one question. I thought that did she bring something to show that they were mm -hmm. in the... Okay. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Can you give her... should be in your file there. Okay. If you want to refer to it. Um, since the time that she gave me that letter, um, she said that they have a standardized letter that they give to um, uh, all the people that's applying for it because this agency is an agency that, um, you know, they, they go like stage by stage with all the paperwork they got to make sure that everything is taken care of before they can move to the next phase and when she when she gave me that paperwork the uh, very first time it was a standardized letter and she informed me every time I call her and ask her for a letter to send me back let me know uh, when um, would some progress be taking place she would always tell me she could always send me the standardized letter so I kind of like got tired of asking her for the standardized letter and I called her again and when I spoke with her on the last occasion, she assured me that uh, everything was met. My, um, they had to go by income. They had to go by because when um, you use uh, state-funded programs, you know that they are very strict about what their uh, qualifications are. And I had met all the qualifications, and I had to have the last paperwork that I sent in. And she told me at that time that I could start packing. The only thing is they, they wanted to send a pod out to my house. And based on the fact that I do have a garage there with the cement um, at toward the back, that they would be able to sit the pod right there on that back so that I could start taking the stuff. But most of the stuff that I'm, I'm throwing away anyway, but they're going to bring the pod out there, and I'm going to put that. And then I'm going to have to request, I guess, from the city. I don't know if the city gives me a pod to throw away garbage or what I have to throw it away on the other side because I'm bringing all the other stuff out and throw it away. But she did tell me that I could start packing. So the process is at an end, and hopefully I won't have to go through this too much longer. You won't either. Yes. This is Anderson. Yes, sir. This is going on since January 19 of January 17, 2019. Okay, sir. You still have the outside storage sitting there? No, sir. It's never been an outside storage there. Okay, so the the thing is in there? No, it was there, and it now there. it's gone. So no, 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 no. No, no, no. It's never been a storage there. It was a, what he called a junk vehicle was there, yeah. but it never been a storage. Uh, Rebuild Florida said they would send me a pod, sir. 
it's never been a storage outside of the house. No, no, he meant outside storage, trash and debris, which are multiple items that were yeah. outside. Like I, the I'm asking and, you according to what the complaint is that I have before me. Okay, that the bushes. Did you have trash and debris? Yeah. Is it still sitting there? No, sir. No. Okay. So what There's are we looking right there. at here then? The, the dilapidated roof yes. and the fade and peeling paint? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. Can they tell you when the pod was coming? No, ma'am, and um, she hasn't told me anything since the last, her last response to me was, uh, that she texted me was, okay, perfect. And um, I have it just here in my phone where I spoke with her, and um, she they needed to find um, some other piece of paper that they needed from me about my, um, because it, it went by um, your income, for the family, since they wanted to know that I I didn't have a a check stub that they could read, and I had to send that in. And when she when I sent her that, she told me um, that pretty much everything was covered. And my last text in my phone from her says right here it says, "Okay, perfect." Okay, uh, June, I was under the impression of Mr. Correct me, I thought that it was all set to go from the company to rebuild the house now, and that we were getting in the more of a file that you have from rebuild Florida that is um, says that they she's completed her application and they're looking at it they are doing it or they are considering it I, I, I don't I think they're considering it and then I think Mike called to get a status mm. I called and I spoke with Liz from Rebuild Florida. They don't give information to any outside party. Okay. Um, but she did confirm that they were part of the uh, out. Mm -hmm. Consider. Okay. Scott Lee, I'm a police captain with the Daytona Beach Police Department. Um, the letter that was previously submitted. Um, <clears throat> appears to be a boilerplate letter that sent from this agency. It says, uh, Andrea Anderson, located at 501 North Key Street, is a resident of Daytona Beach. Andrea Anderson has reached out to Rebuild Florida uh, program to obtain documentation uh, that, it says he, I'm sure it's a typo, uh, is actively seeking resolution to repair and remove her home within uh, your community. Rebuild Florida. Um, housing Repair and Replacement Program is a federally funded program that assists home builders in repair, rebuild, replace homes that were damaged during Hurricane Irma. If a homeowner is eligible, so if a homeowner is eligible, the program will manage and complete the construction process on behalf of the eligible, eligible homeowner up to $150,000. Uh, when an application is submitted, it will be reviewed for eligibility. El eligibility review uh, includes program requirement review and damage assessment of the property and federally required environmental review. <clears throat> These processes take 30 days or more. So I think the city's position at this point was we'd be probably moving to a fine if we're not presented with some type of documentation mm -hmm. that shows that this 30 day process is concluded and that there has been some a formal uh, assessment of the property and that there's a progress that there's progress that's going to continue this case has gone on for um, for just about we're, we're approaching two years um, mm -hmm. and and uh, really at this point um, it's just a reoccurring theme as we keep coming back to the board meetings there's not really been uh, any true change or update between these meetings um, and I think we would request a hundred dollars a day to a cap of ten thousand, is that correct? Can I, What's the date on the letter? Can I? I'm sorry. The date on this letter is July fifteenth, two thousand nineteen. Nineteen. Oh. Uh, so Can, thirty days have passed. Mm -hmm. I. Okay. Yeah. A year. Very good. <laughs> so I have a question for Ms. Anderson. Yes, sir. Because uh, earlier you stated that they keep giving you the standard letter which is what he just read. What, what is the status of your case? Okay, sir, in, 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 in Rebuild Florida, um, 
just like he read the letter, it's a 60 day process. Okay, first they wanted me to bring the property tax up. Okay, I had to pay the property taxes. That was another 60 days. And they went back for review. Okay, she paid the property taxes. Then they wanted me to send in all my income from my job. So I had to send in all my income. Then they wanted me to send in paperwork for my son's disability because I had to jump through every hurdle that they wanted me to do to provide this. The standard letter that she sent him, she informed me that they only have one letter that they send out to, that. To, to each, to each uh, okay. What is the current status? The current status is that I have completed everything that they have asked me to complete. I, ha I had to send in the last paperwork that I had to send in. I sent it in to her. As a matter of fact, she asked me, um, I had to have a paper signed and sent it in to her. She was willing to drive over here from Orlando to pick the paper up for me. That's how bad she wanted to submit it by that Friday. It was a paperwork where I had to sign and uh, have my son signature signed it that he is disabled because he is disabled and that's part of the criteria for them um, doing um, the house. But what we're saying, do you have anything dated after? Because this was July 15th. Okay, I would have I would have had um, letters brought back in here. I would have had her to send me another letter. Um, but after she sent me that standardized letter, and she said the same letter is going to say the same thing every time until we're at that process. Okay, so I. I only thing I can do is I can call her and have her the next time because these people have been working with me to get this accomplished and I have been going step by step by step doing everything she needs. You know when you deal with uh, Florida uh, in governmental programs, it's no easy process and for one year to go by, for uh, you have the paperwork from them, you're ready to find me in one year and it took me one year to get the process all the way together and I can't understand the fact that if, if you have the number and you, 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 you see that the information she's provided, that this is a legitimate agency, that you're ready to find me, and these people are ready to really help me at this time. I don't understand. I, I'm sorry. Okay. So I have a second option that myself and um, Attorney Jackson just discussed, is that if, if we were, if it was what you guys wanted to do was to get a, an amend to next cutoff with the fact that she would need to uh, coordinate or release um, the sharing of information from that entity to the inspector so that no we can verify the process, then we would be amenable to something like that. Um, but right now, if they're so gun ho to to help her, why has it gone on this long? Yeah. So if they're actively involved, even through their letter, they define mm -hmm. a date and time frame of the process. And we do know that a lot of people can submit applications to a lot of entities throughout the state for assistance, but it doesn't mean that they will meet the eligibility requirements and they will be approved. And at this point, we don't see any evidence other than testimony here on, by her that she meets that el eligibility and that there's actually, uh, they are actually engaged in a process of rebuilding a home here. Right, which I had a follow-up question. I have a question. Uh, which was, because uh, Ms. Anderson, you mentioned that they told you they're going to put a pod. Yes, sir. And they told you to start packing. Yes, sir. So did they give you any written? No, she didn't. Um, what, what I have here, sir, is... Um, she didn't give me any written. When I speak to her, she's a counselor, and just like any other counselor, she tells me the progress of the application. The application process goes from her to a board, and in 60 days, it took them two months to review for my handicap accessible to approve that. So what do you have there? All I have right here is um, where I had to have um, proof that I lived in the house September 2017, and I couldn't get it because I didn't have a gas bill, I didn't have a telephone bill, and I didn't have cable. I only had electric and water, so I had to come down here to get the uh, water bill to send to them because LPL would not go back three years. I'm sorry, but so you don't have anything confirming yet? From her? Put a pod on your property, start packing. You don't have anything? Okay, let's read the text. A text or anything saying that? Yeah, but it should have been printed out. Okay, I understand what you're saying. You should have been printed out, and, and true enough, here's all the paperwork. It says... Um, uh okay. I asked her, I said, could you fax me a copy of the paper for disabled so I can get it filed uh, into you today? Also, I don't have the form with me. Thanks, I will call you when I get there. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. This, okay, so thank you very we, much. I, I think we need to stop throwing this stuff onto the board. 
This is the people's problem that come to us to have this evidence that they're doing something. We're sitting here trying to go to, to, to micromanage it for them, and that's not what we're here to do. I have presented all the paperwork that I have, sir. Well, and well then you're it, going to need some help from a, an attorney or a paralegal to help you put your case together because what you're presenting is not evidence enough for us to make a judgment. At this point, this is the last point in the process, sir, and I can't understand the fact that I have presented every piece of evidence from the property taxes, from every step of the way I have presented every piece of paperwork to you, providing the information showing you that I made progress with this property. Listen. This is the last step of the way, and um, it's like it's falling apart. Listen. Let us hear from uh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Jackson, uh, please. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, um, we, we do acknowledge uh, this has been a long process. Yes. <laughs> and we generally would not be agreeing to this process. But we do, we've seen that you know, Ms. Anderson over time has been making steps. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the, the problem we have is that the document that we have says that if anything was happening, that document says it should have happened more than a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> and we have nothing that shows that this, the commitment from this agency that's helping her is a firm commitment. Right now, it, the best that information tells us is that they're still assessing. Right. And, and that's concerning. Um, what the inspectors sought to do was to just get some strong confirmation from this agency of where and it's going and that it is indeed happening. And I remind you that Ms. Anderson last month, and again, this is not a, a, a strike on Ms. Anderson, but she told us at the last meeting that they told her to pack and that they were bringing a pod. And so we've gone now 30 days. She's not packed and there's no pod. And so we're at, we're at a point we don't know what's coming next or how long it really will take. And I think that's an assessment that you would probably want to know if you're going to make some ultimate decisions. Because we do acknowledge that at least it appears, and we've been accepting in good faith, that she has come a long way. So what we're asking, and, and all we, if she can acknowledge and make this effort, what we're asking is that between now and the next meeting, allowing for an uh, amendment uh, I mean, to the next cutoff, mm -hmm. that she uh, sign some type of release or get some given authorization. Any agency that has protected information would release that information with an authorization. So if she could, would give them an authorization to release that information to this inspector, yeah. well, I, I can't address that right at the moment. Okay. But if she can release, uh, get that authorization to release that information to the inspector so that the inspector can give you a better answer on what the future looks like, I think would be a more fair uh, position for the city. The city, we, we're left right now with being able to do nothing more than what we would do, which is we have no proof of the progress that she needs. It's great that the things that she's doing as it relates to what she needs for that agency, but what she needs to remedy this uh, uh, noncompliance, we're not getting proof that we're any closer than we were a year ago. Okay. Sir, at the time, if you, if I may, I just call my counselor and have her on the phone, on speakerphone, and um, she's right here. And um, would would you just state your name, ma'am, and tell them what you could do for me? Uh, I'm Natasha Borders. I'm an intake specialist with Rebuild Florida. Um, what they're trying to say is that I need a, some kind of paperwork saying that. Um, you, I, they can have information to my case because the, a man here called and they wouldn't give him any information. So I need to sign a consent release for you to you? inform them that the process is going through of some kind, ma'am. Okay, well, I already have a consent release form on file. Okay, you have, our program. you have a consent form. Can you, uh, re uh, do I need to sign it for the city of Daytona so you can release information to them stating to the fact that where I am with the process? Um, you, you, well, I, you already, I, I, you signed, you signed a consent and release form with us so that I can inquire about your case. But for them, you'd have to sign something with them allowing me to speak with them. Okay, no problem. Um, 
what do I need to do, sir, at this point? Because um, when I spoke with you last, I had sent in my last paperwork, and um, we we're in the last process of it, and they're, they're saying that I need a progress letter stating when this is going to take place on the behalf. Because okay, I, we can't provide a progress letter. Um, the only thing that we can say is that you're still going through our program, still in the eligibility phase, um, pending final approval. When you say final approval, what else do I need to submit to you, ma'am? It's a two-step approval process. You've already been approved on the first level. I'm waiting for the second approval. Okay. Did I, did not at some point that um, when I finished all the paperwork that um, you were informed me that at that point that you had sent a pod out for me to put the stuff in if I to my house and for me to start packing my stuff. Once once you get through the entire approval process and you meet with a contractor, yes, the contractor will provide you with a pod to put your belongings in there. Okay. And that, Ms. Anderson, if I could just interject. Yes. yes. Hold on for one second. We can't accept yeah. that because she's not sworn in. Okay, ma'am, you have to swear in. They didn't, they said they no. won't accept it because you can't swear in. And, so all I need but, to know is that if they send you a, a release of information, can you provide them with the information where I'm at with the process? How do we know? Uh, um, like I said, the only thing that we can provide you is a letter. Pretty much, it's pretty much the same letter that you received from me prior to this, stating that you are going through the process with the program. I'm not authorized to sign any forms or, you know, provide you a progress, a progress update. That's something that, you know, I have to forward on to my manager, and, you know, if anything, they can speak to the manager. Okay, can I, can you speak to the manager? Recommendation again. Okay, she has to be here. What is what can she be on Zoom next time? Yeah, we can do so. Can we do Zoom the next time? Okay, fine. Okay, then hold on for one minute. Hold on for one minute, ma'am. I'm gonna hold on Our position is. Just give us one one brief moment. Okay, sir. By the next cutoff date, can I have her to provide whatever information or whatever releases I need? Okay. Okay, so where we are uh, as far as the position of the city is that um, we still will leave it as uh, we described it a moment ago with the two options. One is that we're asking for a $100 fine to a maximum of $10,000 and all, or on the alternative that she satisfy you with uh, this person can appear on Zoom if you'll want more information and actually be able to ask whatever questions you'll desire to ask, if that's something that, or provide whatever, or, you know, she can work on that, of course, that's nothing you can work out right in, on the spot this moment uh, and bring additional information to the next meeting. But obviously that's a board's decision, and, uh, but that's the two options that we're, we're uh, kind of laying out as a uh, recommendation from the uh, staff that um, we, we feel we're kind of, even though we recognize and we're not going to do anything less than that, that uh, she has been coming here and she has been diligently coming as she said she would, and she's been showing that she's been taking steps towards this process. Uh, what we don't have is anything that says this process is bringing us to a remedy. And so we, we, we leave that to the board for how, how long uh, your patience will uh, last on that. Uh, we feel at least the necessity to, to feel we're at a point that we have to at least ask for the fine and to put an end to this, but alternatively, we leave it up to the board. We would be willing to let the board, or at least take, we would not be opposed to the board taking a position of getting more information from this agency through whatever other means. Can I say something? Right. Make a motion that we reluctantly accept this second recommendation that we uh, ask for the person in charge of that, uh, that company. Rebuild Florida. Or whatever to appear before us next meeting.
Maiden and on Zoom Maiden. So, and that the uh, Miss Anderson, uh, uh, give them all for day. everything they need to re so they can release information. Oh, to that, us. That, that's not a motion. Okay, so you're, you're. That's not a motion. I'm, I'm, motion. My motion is that we. Who do you uh, want to give the information? That needs to be stated, not the, uh, whoever it is. The lady from the state. Well, okay, let me understand this. The motion is for $100 per day and no. to... No, it was the motion. No. No. No, okay. The motion is the next cutoff. To amend. Next cutoff to the amend to the next cutoff. But she must have proof that they are building the house, that they are, am I saying this right? Right. We're in the process of and, and that we can question the person from the state on the Zoom. On a Zoom okay. Meeting. Okay. Is there a second? A second. Okay. It has been moved and properly second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. No. Okay. We have one no. Got it. Mr. Harrington. Can okay, Ms. Anderson, you're to next cutoff, but you must bring us the proof or on Zoom, the lady stating that they are building the house. Okay, um, can I just say this, just like she said, um, with any federal or government program, you, you already know that they have a process. She says that she is not the person that would be able to be on Zoom. What would have to take place is that she would have to have her... Um, supervisor or whoever it is to have a paperwork. So what I'll do is all I can do is ask uh, whatever paper you need me to sign so you can send to her so they can release you all the information, technical, because like she said, and the letter says, each process takes up to 30 days or more. They've already did all the sampling. They have did everything they need in my case. They're just, at this point, they're just at the board. They even did the handicap accessible part of it. At this case, they're just at the board for them to get finalized and, like she said, okay. have the building contractor to come out because they're going to have to come out because the city says that I have a, a four-bedroom house, and I said I had a five-bedroom house, and she told me at that point that they would have to come down and get the city plans. Okay. So it's a lot of stuff that they had to do. And at this okay. point, to find me at, really at the end is, it's un, uh, I can't even understand it. Okay, but uh, the next is November. November. November the 4th is the cutoff, and then November the 12th. Okay, I'm going to request that the board give me to January um, the next one because whatever she needs to do for me at that point and send the paperwork back so that you can get um, all the information you need, release the information so they could give you. It has been voted on for the next cutoff. So if I don't have it by then, then what? You have I can't. I can't make these people give me the paperwork. You understand what I'm saying? I can only. I can only but, do my best to um, try to um, get, get the paperwork in a timely manner. Get with Mr. Fitzgerald, Miss Anderson, <laughs> please, and yes, communicate Anderson, with him. Everyone else was yes. But by next requiring week. Requiring someone to appear by Zoom. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Right. Our next case, number ten. CEB 09-20-171. Respondent is not present. Okay. Is um, <laughs> Ms. Um, June, there will be some help with this. <laughs> the name? Yes. Is Railoff? Mark Kitty is Railoff and Gregory okay. is Railoff. Okay. Um, Mr. Fitzgerald. Uh, yeah, the property remains in non-compliance, and I'm asking for a fine of $300 a day to a maximum of $20,000. i Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved and properly second. All in the... Aye. 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 Was that you second, Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. I just yeah. hear it behind me, but I, I didn't hear it. And I forgot June asked us all to speak up. <laughs> no, I'm trying to keep yeah. up with y'all. Okay, okay I'm, I'm good. Okay. Case number 11, CEB 08-20-164, Dale Wilson. Um, they are not here. Okay. 
this property remains in non-compliance, I'm asking for a fine of $200 a day to a maximum of $20,000. i second. Okay. Second by Mr. Gonzalez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Case number 12, they are here. CEB 08-20-165, Ernestine England. State your name and address, please. Chris Hadley, um, 4306 Colony Way, Orlando, Florida. Okay. And are you going to testify as well? No? Yeah. Okay. Uh, raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I affirm. Thank you. Okay. We're here from our code officer first. Yeah, the property remains in noncompliance. Um, she did get a roofer, and the roofer couldn't do the work on the roof because the rafters are too weak and she's going to have to get a contractor to rebuild the rafters. No, I'll leave it to. So your recommendation? Let's see if she's hired a contractor. Yes, and I do have um, on my phone, my cell phone, where the roofer uh, was on the roof and he uh, texted me and showed me what's going on. If I could show them. And he said, he called me, uh, at least I had been calling him, and uh, didn't get any uh, call back from him until uh, Tuesday. And he said that uh, the people that he used, they're very, very busy right now. And he said, so I would need to try and get my own contractor, and once that's done, he'll come back and uh, put the roof on, and he said it'll take about about two days for him to do it, but I got to get this contractor first to come in and assess what needs to be done. So what I would uh, like to ask if you would give me at least uh, 60 days uh, to uh, try and locate a contractor. Okay. Are there any questions from the board? Uh, this is uh, about a year from when this all started. How come it's taken so long? Because my mother, uh, she passed away last year, uh, and she was very sick. She was 95 years old, and I was her caregiver. And um, really, I had been dealing with my husband as well, but uh, he passed away also some years ago, and I had both of them at the same time, so um, it was pretty rough. And then the last time I was here, uh, last month, when I left here, I learned that my brother was ill, and he passed away. Okay, Miss England, so you're asking for 60 days to get what, the contractor? Yes, I need a contractor okay. before the roof can be applied. The contractor will be building the underneath the roof, which would be the rafters, because the rafters, when you stand on that roof, wasn't holding the people. So the roof would have to be removed, rafters put in, new rafters, and then the roof people can come in and do what they do, which is uh, just putting on the, the, the other, the upper part of the roof. So what she was saying, after they come in and do that, it'll only take two days. That's just the last part of it. The, the uh, rebuilding the roof is going to take a little bit of time. Okay. Has so, anything been done on the dirt, grime, peel, and paint? They've been cleaning up slowly. Um, I would like anything that's, that's standing water to, for the water to be removed or rem and remove all of the outside storage. There were a few things left out there still the last time I was there. Okay. Okay. But they have been taking down a lot of the uh, the bushes and things like that and airing out the house. 
and your recommendation we need. Um, I would like to, to ask if she would let the city come in to do to look at the interior of the house also because it may be the damage of the water going through the roof for so long and maybe if we can ac get access to it. Um, I'd like next cutoff if she allowed us to get access. Ms. Anglin, did you understand what he said? So you say next cutoff is when? Yes, but he wants to come in the house because he fears that the, the water leakage has da damaged other things. So will you allow him to come in? Yes. Give me one second. Yes. Okay, so the I mean is that first of oh. I mean we know there there's possibly some leakage in there. So um why do you need to do that before I get my roof done? I mean I, I you're gonna have to go in there anyway. Yeah, I'm, and I'm 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 trying to understand why do you need to do that? I've had at least two people put roofs on, and then when they go to pull the permit to fix the inside, the city says that it's too bad, and, and they wouldn't let them. And I didn't want you to go through all that without having the ability of the city to go in and just see it, how, how well the house is inside before you, you did that. But you have to go in anyway once the roof is on there, is the amount, do I, right? Yes, after you pull the permit for the interior. Okay, so why can't we do that then? I'd appreciate it. Nothing that I'm trying to hide, but I'm, I just wanted to, I'm trying to understand okay. why, why no you have to do to that. Out. All right. Okay. So we're at, um, I mean, just help, help me out. I, I, I want to understand exactly what's what. Well, he said he was trying to save you from doing the roof, and then once they come in, when you get ready to do the inside, they find things that should have been done before the roof was done. I think that's what he was trying yeah, to tell there, you. There are other houses you. that people have done exactly what you did, was put a brand new roof on it, and when they go in to do the inspection on the roof, they condemn the house, and they've spent $10,000 on a roof that now it has to be tore down. And I just didn't want you to go through that. I, so my recommendation is allow us to go in and check the house out with the building inspector. And then and the, we, we would give you 30 days to the next call. But if not, then uh, I'll be yeah imposing a fine today. OK, he's asking for that. Or today he will, yeah. we will be imposing a fine. All right. Okay. Are there any questions? I just want to ask Mr. Fitzgerald to clarify the process. If somebody gets a permit to do the roof, like she will have to. Okay. Generally, the roofing company gets the permit, right? Yeah, the roofing company. In this case, the roofing company went there, stood on the roof, found out that the roof was bad, and got off the roof. Does does the contractor have to get a permit to do the rafters and what they have to do? Yes, yes that's the, the, it has to be a general contractor right. to do the rafters that, that are damaged on that roof. And I know at least two cases just this year where that was done, the whole roof was done, and then they pulled a permit to do the inside, and then they condemn it. And that money has just been thrown out. And so what I was trying to do was get in there, look at the house, just to see where we're at with the house, with building inspectors, and give her the best scenario for her. Right, but I understand mm -hmm. that. So nobody has to go in the house before. Right, but after the roof. About after? Yeah, that's when we find out. So that's, but that's she said true. she would rather wait until after. Yeah, so that's up to her. Well, I'm just trying to, I, Madam Chair, I'm just trying to understand just really understand, okay, the, the roofer said that he couldn't do the roof because the rafters, 
he said was um, he thought he they were no good. The roof could not set on set on the house. So I'm just trying to understand if I get the general the contractor and then the roofer put the roof on and I'm I thought that after they put the roof on then code enforcement would go out and check the roof. And then if it's something else that needed to be done on the inside or whatever, I thought that's what they would let me yeah, know then. He was, he, that's what I'm trying to understand. All he was, Why did he need to go in before then? He wanted to go in before, which would save you if something else was wrong. That's what he was trying to do. She's saying but, she already knows she needs a general contractor to come in and do her rafters. All. Right, yeah. but what he was saying that he wanted to go in to see was there other damage from the leakage to the house. But um, okay, I see this as, as a fair trade. You want us to give you an additional amount of time uh, to do to repair things that have been done since 2019 and we're simply asking can we go in and look at inside i think that's a fair trade i don't i don't see what what, what whose rights are being damaged or any harm is being done if we can extend your time you can give us the favor of let, letting us go in and look and and if i just can clarify one thing from the city that it was it's not compulsory but i think it is fair so, I mean, the request is, is just a request for her benefit, but it, we're not making it a compulsory request. I mean, yeah. if, if y'all elect to grant time, that's what y'all elect to do. Well, she but, said. But we think it would be fair for her or be in her best interest to at least allow will, to make a determination and, uh, for uh, what, what happens next. If we really believe ultimately that we have the need to access them we'll, we'll you know work that out if it's been a property probably with uh yeah i understand but she said that you didn't want him to go in Ms. I, I just wanted to just wanted yeah. to understand and um why he would have to go in that's all not trying to hide anything i just wanted to he wanted to go in and look I, for I your understand what you're saying your, there. Yeah. I understand that point. Okay. But I just thought that after my work is done, I thought that's when he would come in and check right. the, the roof and see if everything was in compliance. Yeah, just, just to clarify, the... I mean, if, if you don't want us to come in, we're not going to come in. That's always going to be your right. right. Um, but at the end of the day, we have we have a lot of experience in this process, and we have seen people waste a lot of money. And that's our concern here in this project for you. So sometimes it's better to have a full picture view of what's going on and say, okay, this is the, this is the order in which things need to get done, and this is the timetable. And then it will help us establish with you a timetable that would be acceptable for the board to be able to work through everything that needs to be worked through here. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, again, the choice is always yours, but it, it, I, I'm, I'm being honest with you. It's coming from a good place where we're trying to make sure that you don't spend ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars on a roof or other repairs, and then get inside and there's something that that causes you a hurdle that that that, that hangs you up and causes you to lose that money or lose the value of that money. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Get a motion. So we need a motion, but is she going to let you in, or that's what I was waiting for. That, um, to give, give me at least uh, 60 days mm -hmm. to, because I got to locate a contractor, and then yes, but he the time that you're going to come in. You gonna, are you going to let him in? Yes. Okay. Okay. We'll wait outside. I'll make an appointment. The, okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, okay. Thank the you. chair will entertain a motion to find Ms. England in noncompliance and to uh, amend, amend. amend the month. Now, it's no December, so it would be 90 days. Uh, November. Well, no, we, we do still have a November. Oh, she asked meeting. for six. Okay, then That's you would I'm be on. amending to January 6th. Okay, to January 6th. Or be okay. returned. Can I get a second? My motion. I second. Okay. Moved and second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Who made the motion? I did. You well, can't I make mean, the I did. Yes, I, I did. Motion. Thank you, Mr. Yes, Consolid. I did. I really did. I forgot. Okay. okay. Um, all all in cattle. favor? Aye. And she second. Yeah, I got her. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. 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 Miss England, you have to until January 6, 2021, okay. to return. All right. Thank and you. To be in compliance. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. If you want to make a motion, you can, but pass the gavel to Mr. Harrington. Yeah, I'd say it, uh, Mr. Meeting. Gonzalez. Thank you. That's what you were saying. Senior member. Left. Yeah. Oh, someone else? Oh, he's yeah. a senior member. If you want to make a motion, you have to pass the gavel to Mr. Oh, yeah. Harrington. I know. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot. Right. Okay. We're good, Mr. Okay. Gonzalez. Case number 13. And I did tell you Mr. Gonzalez stepped out. Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, CEB 03-2-20-55, Floyd Mastinati. Tony, you want to do this one? Mr. Fitzgerald. Yeah. That's the due process. No, I don't want to do it. Yeah, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for um, imposition of a fine. And, and the reason this is before you actually, when you look at the uh, pictures, you will see that this is a case that's already have come before you. And, and quite honestly, by pronouncement, you had a, pronounced a uh, auto fine. However, um, the, there was a due process issue in, in terms of delivery of the notice of the fine to the respondent. And so that notice of the fine had never been granted, given to the respondent. So uh, the, that would have made an auto fine uh, invalid or ineffective. And so we're, we're here today on imposition of a fine returning before the board, them having notice of this proceeding, and uh, returning before the board and asking the board to, to just go ahead and impose a fine of $100 per day to a maximum of $10,000 a day. This property remains in noncompliance. I tender the inspector, Mike Fitzgerald, to uh, uh, speak to you with, as to the facts of noncompliance if that needs to be uh, reiterated for uh, your benefit. Okay. It is in noncompliance. It remains in noncompliance. I'm asking for $100 a day to a maximum of $10,000. Second. Okay. So moved by uh, Mrs. Robert and second by Mr. Harrington. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Case number 13, CEV 03-20-50. Oh. Case number 14, CEV um, 09-20-179. Janie S. Langford Estate. This property remains in noncompliance, and I'm asking for $100 a day to a maximum of $10,000. Second. We moved in second. Who, who was first? <laughs> you know, I got it right down when Ms. he said. Ms. Roby <laughs> and Mr. Robertson second. Okay, thank you. It's minor All, stuff, but um, see the back building and that outside favor. storage. Everything else looks great. All in favor? Uh, they need to come and show up then. Yeah. I don't know, I've never okay. talked to That was 100, right, Mike? Yes. Thank you. 10,000. Case number 15. CEV 09-20-174. Joseph Maliki and Alice Maliki. Can you state your name and address, please? Uh, Ethan Malecki, 414 Mary McLeod Bethune Boulevard. What was your first name? Ethan. Ethan, sorry. Joe. And your name? Joseph Malecki. 
Gotcha. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay. We're here for Mr. Fitzgerald first. Uh, the missing siding on the building has been repaired, so that part is in compliance. Uh, everything else still remains the same. We're asking for a fine of $200 a day to a maximum of $20,000. Okay. Mr. Maliki? Um, after the last meeting we came to, we had reached out to about three general contractors, and all those fell through because they didn't want to take a job that small, and one of them, they were just too busy. So last Thursday, we re reached out to another one, and over the last week, he's been, his engineer has been down there. He's putting together a quote, and I believe he's in talks with permits and stuff. So we just probably need another couple weeks for them to submit a permit for us to get the wall up. Are there any questions from the board? So you're pretty confident this next, this last contractor is going to do it? Yeah, I have his name, name and information. And he's been on board, like, right from the beginning from us talking to him. And he's a smaller company, so. Have you given that information to Mr. Fitzgerald? No, I just had gotten it yesterday. Uh, okay, please do that. Okay. okay. I can make a motion to amend to the next cutoff. I'll second. Moved and second. All in favor? We have to rescind the fine first. Wasn't no, it? No, there was there no was fine. No. Okay. Did you? So we're all no right. No, okay. No fine right now. No. no. Okay. No, there's no fine. Minute order. No, I abstain my vote. Send that stuff to you. One abstain. Okay. Thank you. You can't abstain. Okay. You're not allowed to abstain, Mr. Gonzalez. Oh, okay. Mr. Gonzalez did vote. not vote. Okay, then I'll vote no. He has a roll call vote. Then the men could Give a roll call. Yeah. A roll call vote, please. There's no confusion. Uh, Mr. Robinson. Yeah. Mr. Gonzalez. No. Ms. Roby. Yeah. Mr. Harrington. Yes. Ms. Himes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Only four, one. Stain, I believe, if you have a conflict. A, a, personal conflict okay. otherwise you have to vote on any issue okay. well will you please show me where it says that in the parliamentary rule well, i don't happen to have them with okay. me but we have two lawyers who might know you could that. just vote no yeah okay so no. Okay. he voted no that's what i said yeah. no yeah. he voted no then I guess they're gone okay <laughs> case number 16 ceb 09-20-182 Ronnie Pearl Dittema. Can you state your name and address, please? My name is Emery Dewey Lyons. My address is 6155 Jeffreys Boulevard, Walterboro, South Carolina. Oh, near um, What was your name again? Emery Dewey Lyons. And your relation? I'm her son. Okay. Okay, raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, we're here for Mr. Fitzgerald. At this time, the property remains in noncompliance. And uh, he's been out there working diligently. It's a very large house. He's uh, doing it right, scraping everything down. And I'm asking to amend to the next cutoff. Okay. Are there any questions from the board? Yeah. Is there a motion? Oh, do you want to let him speak? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would help. Mr. Lyons? Yes, ma'am. Do you have anything to say? I'm doing the best I can. There's only one of me, and the weather has not been very compliant for painting since I've been here. Okay. Okay. Are you confident you're going to be able to get it done within a month? Not the complete house, no, sir. How There's, long do you think? I'm figuring probably about two months to get it completed because the, the sunny side of the house is really bad. The sides where the shade is is not that bad. 
And that's what I'm working on is the sides that's really bad right now. And I'm having to work, you know, in the shaded areas, like underneath that roof right there. In the afternoons, I work there. And in the mornings, I work in the back of the house. So that's, that's I mean, I'm doing the best I can do with what I got. Okay. Mr. Fitzgerald, would you consider that unreasonable that we made it uh, two months so we don't have to go through this again next month? Yes. It'll, it'll have to be oh, three months. Yeah, January. January. It'll make it January. January. So, Mr. Robertson, is that a motion yeah, to find a non-compliance? Okay. 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 Mr. Lines. Um, yes, ma'am. Is that all? Is there any questions from the board? Do we have a second? I'll second. Um, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Mr. Lyons, you have until our January board meeting, which is January 6th, am I correct? Cut off. Cut off. Right. January cut off. The meeting is January the 14th. 14th, okay. January 14th. That needs to be in compliance by January the 6th. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Case number 17 CEB 09 20 172, Ruth M. Dixon. Respondent's not present. Okay. Mr. Fitzgerald. This property remains in non compliance. It's on a corner of Friedmont and uh, Fairview. And it's a uh, big eyesore. No one's cutting the grass. It's. Uh, I'm asking for a fine of $300 a day to a maximum of $15,000. Um, $300 a day to a maximum of fifteen. dollars Ms. Rowe removed and Mr. Robinson second. Thank you. $300 per day. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay. Case number 18, CEB 09-20-181. Susie Uriah. Respondent not present. Mr. Fitzgerald. The property remains in non-compliance and I'm asking for a fine of $250 a day to a maximum of $15,000. I've spoken to them on the phone. I expected them to be here. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, opposed? Okay. Case number 19, CEB 09-20-175, Theo Cox. Respondent's not present. Okay. Mr. Fitzgerald. Property remains in non-compliance. I'm asking for a fine of $200 a day to a maximum of $15,000. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Okay. Case number 20, <coughs> CEB 09-20-168, Tracy and Lysandra Johnson is in compliance as of 10-120. Case number 21, CEB 08-20-158, Charles Thomas is in compliance as of 10-7-20. Case number 22, CEB 08-20-156 is Deshaun Edwards Wilder. Can you state your name and address, please? Deshaun Edwards. Address is 564 Magnolia Avenue, Daytona Beach, Florida. Zip code is 32114. Thank you. Could you raise your right hand? Yes, ma'am. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony of your about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You can say not. Okay. We're here for my code officer, Ms. Kirk. Excuse me. 
excuse me. Uh, the property is, is in noncompliance still. Uh, Captain Lee does have an update that he would like to provide. Yeah, la last month we told the board that we would work with him to try to uh, engage some resources to be able to assist with some of this um, and uh, meet with the building department. Uh, we did have a meeting, uh, myself and Mr. Wilder and uh, uh, Bo Snowden with the building department met at the property. Um, and we have tried to engage some resources to assist him. The problem has not been his problem. It's been a scheduling issue with those resources and uh, with myself as well. So um, we do have a plan that will t go into effect, to try to help remediate some of this in October. Um, in fact, we're meeting again with Mr. Wilder on uh, uh, Friday tomorrow to connect those resources with him. And uh, it will take us to um, till November to try to assist. I'm not saying we'll get full compliance by then, but you should see some improvement and a, and a, and a path to a, to a solution at that point. Here's the motion recommendation. Amend the next cutoff. Amend the next cutoff. So moved. Can I get a second? No, sir. Okay. Mr. Robertson, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, opposed. Okay. Mr. Waller, you have until November cutoff of the church. Yes, ma'am. Right. That's all you need from me? Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Case number 23CEB04-20-87, Estelle Marion Clay. Respondent's not present. This is a phone note. Okay. Respondent's not present. Okay, I'm waiting on Ms. Kirk. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. I know. <laughs> we had to put the right pictures up. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, this, Just heard dead air. No. <laughs> this property is in noncompliance. Uh, these pictures were taken, uh, I believe, yesterday. Or I have some pictures from yesterday. Um, no, the owner is deceased. No relatives were found. We did uh, properly notice. Uh, but the property is in uh, very bad shape, so we're asking for a fine of $200 a day to a max of 10000 Okay. Second by Mr. Robertson. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Okay, case number 24, CEB 04-20-84, Larry Sanders. I think he is here. State your name and address, please. Oh. Sir, state your name oh. and address, uh, please. Uh, Larry Sanders. Larry Sanders. Larry Sanders. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, boy. Raise your right hand, please. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I is. <laughs> Okay. We are here for Ms. Kurt this okay. time. Uh, Mr. Sanders has been in constant contact with me. Uh, he has made uh, progress. I provided a few different pictures. Like this is August. Uh, this was this was November. I'm sorry. This is August. This is November of 19. So that was almost a year ago. Uh, this is August of, and then here's September uh, 18th of 2020. Uh, so the porch has been demolished that was being held up by the two by fours and the permit for the de demo for the front porch has been finaled. Um, their other accessory permit to rebuild the porch is under review. Um, he has uh, been working on the property, progress has been made. And um, he also, uh, I've confirmed with Ms. Tolliver and the housing, the city's housing assistance program that he is on a waiting list as of August 10th to get assistance, but I feel that um, I would like to amend uh, to the January cutoff date. Okay. Mr. Sanders, do you have anything yes, to say? Yes. Okay, is there anything from the board? I make a motion to amend to the January cutoff date for... Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Mr. Sanders, you have until the January, January 6th to come into compliance. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Sarah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Our next case is case number 25, CEV 06-20-145, Samuel and Rhonda P. Ferguson. State your name and address, please. Samuel Ferguson, 1600 North Patrick Circle, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32117. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay. We are here for Ms. Kirk first. Please. Okay. Uh, this came in as a complaint. There is still, he, he has done some work. There was a lot of dirt and grime that was removed and some of the peeling paint and the paint has been uh, prepared, but there's still bare surfaces um, and as of yesterday and the, the vehicle still remains inoperable on the property. Uh, with that being said, we're asking for a hundred dollar a day fine to a max of fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ferguson. Yes, ma'am. I've been dealing with this property. I just went through a divorce. I just got final on the 29th. I didn't know where the property was going to go, but my wife did a lot of the damage to the property. And if you check your records, you'll see she's the one that called you. Okay. I've been struggling to get it repaired. As recently as the uh, last couple of weeks, I had to call my lawyer to get her off the property again, in which I caught her on. So I'm doing the repairs, but now that the, to the property is totally in my control now, um, I'm going to go ahead and finish everything up. Okay, so what about the junk vehicle? I just got the um, title to that vehicle uh, last month as well. I uh, had the tags and everything for it, but they said it had to be operational. So now that I got the tags, it was supposed to have been moved last weekend. It'll be moved this weekend. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ferguson, if I may, Madam yeah. Chair. Uh, Mr. Ferguson, can you explain what you mean when you say the property is completely in your control? Or yeah, I got it in my divorce. Now? Yes, I'm the sole owner now. In the divorce, there should be a, a um, what, title transfer. Um, should have been signed last in the last 50, 10 days ago. So we need a change of what? Yeah, and I put in the address. That's another thing why I missed the prior meetings. I wasn't getting the information, and I went down to the property appraisal just a couple of weeks ago to change the address there. It won't be in effect. Uh, my business partner told me about the meeting the day I wouldn't even got this information. So could our, our secretary, do, she needs the new address or show that it is? Yeah, 16, yeah can I get it? give it now? Yeah, she I gave it to here. them at, at one point, but they okay, said that my address for getting notifications. Go ahead. And um, what's your address? 1600 North Patrick Circle, P-A-T-R-I-C-K Circle, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32117. Okay. okay. Do you need to see that information that it's? totally he is now. Yeah, I have my divorce I'll decree and my agreement here. I'll continue to notice it as the property tax is, and then okay. she can do what she needs to do if, when it shows up in the property tax. That so it what to. is there left to do on the... Uh, right now, uh, just the vehicle, and then there's some uh, bare surfaces on the right there that needs to be painted. So yeah, it, it, it is uh, there, you know, it's it's being worked on. There's still a little bit of peeling paint that was painted over that needs to be removed and painted over again instead of just covering it up. But it's definitely on its way to um, compliance. Um, I, did, I wasn't aware of the information that you did receive the title for the car and the tags. So that yeah, is that's not recent as of today. Yes. Madam Chair, having acknowledged that there's been some contention in terms of ownership in those issues, um, uh, the um, staff has indicated we're, we're going to ask the men to the next cut off and allow him the time as the sole owner to uh, finish.
taking taking care of these matters and get this property in compliance. So moved. That's my final judgment. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Mr. Ferguson. It's 11, what? I'm sorry. Four. The date next month cut off. I'm sorry. 11 4. Yes, ma'am. 11 4 2020. Mr. Ferguson, you have until okay. November the 4th to come into compliance. Yes, ma'am. Please stay in touch with Ms. Kirk to let her know, you know, the progress of it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, have a good day. Okay. Thank you. Case number 26. Hold on, one minute. Uh, 26 is here. He did give us copies of the divorce. Oh, he did, okay. Case number 26, CEB 06 20 112. Frederick Hoffman. <clears throat> Address. <clears throat> Fred Hoffman, 882 East Coquina Drive. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Vince this <Stinson. laughs> Good morning, John Stenson, code inspector with the city. My qualifications are on file. <clears throat> uh, the property remains in non-compliance for the peeling paint and the damaged gutters. Uh, there's been no permits for the roof as of yesterday, uh, which Mr. Hoffman stated he was going to do before he did the painting and the gutters. So the city is asking for $75 per day, capped at 10000 75. 75. Say that again. 75 per day, capped at 10. Thank you. Did you? I got what we got to hear from. Oh, yeah. Mr. Hoffman. Yes, um, I, uh, I put the permit in yesterday morning, and I said, uh, how much is it? And they said, well, it has to go through whatever process they have. The reason it took that long is because that approval code, that FL, whatever it is for the sheet, for the underlayment and the metal, because it's gonna be a metal roof. Uh, we had to get that and they couldn't get it to me till, till the day before at like 7 p.m. I spoke to the guy, 8 p.m. And, but I, I did, a, did they, I just came from the code enforcement down there, or the um, building department, and they, I said, can I get something in writing to show that I, that I uh, you know, put the paperwork in? They said, you can check it from here to know that I did that, but we can't give you anything. But I did, do, but it is, you can check it and, and see. Okay. Are there any questions from the board? <coughs> I believe Captain Lee is checking, Madam Chair. I believe Captain Lee is checking now. Okay. Yes, there there is an application for a permit applied for um, today, so that would be consistent with what he's saying. Um, it's under it's under review, and that process takes a period of time. Uh, they got to go through the steps of review. Okay. So we're. That being said, I have no problem with amending to the next cutoff. Hopefully by uh, hopefully by then the roof will be on. Should be on because because he said about a couple of weeks. We moved in second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, who motion? Ms. Roby motion and Mr. Robertson second. Thank you. Mr. Hoffman, you to amend. Amend, yeah. You have until November the fourth to come into compliance. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
Case number 27, CEV 07 20 109, Myra Haddock. The respondent is not present. Okay. Mr. Stinson. Uh, good morning. Uh, <clears throat> the property remains in non compliance. Uh, they have applied for a permit on, on 929. It's currently under review. It needs corrections. Um, as of yesterday, there have not been corrections um, submitted for the permit. The city is asking for $100 per day to be capped at $10,000. So moved by Ms. Robeson, second by Mr. Robertson. Hundred per day with a cap of ten. Yes. Okay. Case number twenty-eight, <coughs> CEB 09-20-166, Mark A. Carousel. Carousel. And that's in compliance. It's in compliance as of ten seven. Yes. Okay. New cases. Case number twenty-nine, CEB. 10-20-197, Charles and Amelia Micklin. State your name and address, please. Milton Driscoll. I'm sorry. Milton Driscoll. Miss Milton Bristol. Driscoll. Driscoll. Driscoll, Driscoll yeah. Okay. Sorry. No, it's fine. And your name? Karen Driscoll. And your relationship? to Charles W. and Amelia Macklin. We're buying a house from them. Where are you in the process? Where are So you signed a contract approach indeed? We already have. We're almost paid off. Yeah. So it's close. Okay, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Did you said that you have purchased the house. We're, we're under a uh, contract, so we've been ma making the monthly payments. We got contract with you. So they what? So they haven't heard. They haven't. They don't own it yet. Well, okay. So they, they, they're they interested party, but they're not, they don't own it. So they... Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get you. Were you told about the code violations from the seller? We had gotten a letter. Um, let me explain the last year and a half, almost two years, my husband's been undergoing cancer treatments. We've been in and out of the hospital. We almost lost him. We have, we've been making bills. He lost his job. He lost his insurance. I'm the only person working in the house. I am. Uh, and I'm doing my best to pay my bills and keep my yard up, but he can't do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting better, I'm getting stronger, but the thing is before all this happened, is I started replacing all the facial boards on the house, making preparation for the you know new uh, drip edge for a new roof, and uh, that's about the time I got diagnosed, and uh, so that's why you know the only thing I can do is try to protect it with tarps and whatnot. Um, right now, we've been in touch with the county; um, they have programs, I guess, for assistance with that. I haven't heard back from them yet. Um, another thing is the house is going to be paid off here shortly. Um, I can start collecting um, Social Security when I'm 62, and that'll be in January. So that'll give us extra money. So if, if the county doesn't help us, we'll be able to do something at that, at that time. Um, having the house paid off, when it gets paid off, and me getting uh, some income from Social Security, we could probably, you know, finance a new roof. But in the meantime, all they're going to do is protect it. Okay. Mr. Clegg, has any of this work been done? No, ma'am, no work's been done. It's been done. No permits have been uh, okay. applied for. Does the board have any questions? I just need to find I'm, them in compliance or non-compliance. Yeah, it's correct. not it's non-compliance. Right. Next correct. Code. We don't know what we're non-compliant in. That's the problem. Non-compliance means that you have not... Um, yeah, but we don't know main, the reasoning. Maintain the lawn, exterior structure, the roof and drainage. Our lawn is cut every every couple weeks. Yeah, we have our a, neighbor kid cuts it. Yeah, he comes. He cuts our yard every couple weeks. 
can I interject something? Yes. And maybe the lawyers can uh, chime in too. While uh, we might feel uh, sympathy and stuff, the law says, I believe, that we're dealing with the owners, not an interested party or somebody in the process of buying the house. So we're simply to be dealing with uh, Charles W. and Amelia Mecklen. Excuse me. That's right, to the owners. All right. To the owners. Excuse me. We make our last payment on our home today. So we will yeah, own the we'll, house we'll as own. of today. Yeah, but until we have paperwork, yeah. we have to deal with the owner. Uh, I, I, if, if I'm understanding mm -hmm. right, you're representing y'all have some type of contract for deed situation? Yes, yes sir. And y'all are paying that off, so y'all completing that. Is that something that y'all have recorded? Yes. Okay. Do you have it in papers or anything? For, for this, this stage of uh, a determination of compliance and non-compliance, uh, an interested party is, is sufficient. I don't know if we have to, okay. as far as compliance and non-compliance, um, but I, I believe that and this, you'd have to see Mr. Sino's thoughts on this, but I, I think we've looked, researched this issue before, and a contract for deed, recorded contract for deed, would be a sufficient representation of ownership for these types of proceedings. Now, I'm, I'm told that they're not showing up on the tax record right now, but, you know, again, we'd have to look and, and look further. But as far as for determination of compliance and noncompliance, uh, 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 you have the private parties in front of us. Yeah, a party before us that uh, have an interest in the uh, proceeding, I mean, in the property, uh, would be appropriate for uh, consideration okay. of our actions and whatever promises they're making. In fact, we'd go for it even if we had no party, as we know. Uh, uh, and so, we find them in non-compliance. She's claiming she doesn't know what they're in non-compliance about. So that she has to get with Mr. Clue. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, but just just in general, the the the, uh, the point is in terms of the compliance, non-compliance. That 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 terminology just means that you've been cited for a violation. I understand. A number of violations, and I those violations at this moment are not in compliance. I don't and know so, the violations So are. at this moment, you're not being fined or anything. What you're doing is being given t time to complete those things that have to be completed. Right. And then that will be determined by an inspector. You keep in contact with the inspector, the inspector coming out, inspecting, giving you an affidavit of compliance when you're done, or reporting back to, coming back to another proceeding and reporting to this board for this board to make the I understand that. I, I just don't know what exactly. We need to bring up the that compliance. you're looking at that I'm not in compliance with. Yeah, I, I think y'all made mention of the roof, but would you want to just get back with your inspector and let him explain with clarity exactly what he needs you to do okay. to reach, meet, meet compliance? Tony, is there anything of record? I'm sorry? The, uh, if that is the contract for deed of record? I, I, um, I think uh, um, Captain Lee is indicating it is. Yeah, it's showing them as on here as in care of. Yeah. And then there's a recorded memorandum agreement for deed. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah it is recorded and uh, and so forth. Have the right to be here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I get what you're saying. Right. Are there any questions from the board? What is your motion? I'd like to make a motion. Hey, uh, you Oh, okay. I'm sorry. sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. I'd like to make I'd like to make a motion <coughs> that we find the parties in non-compliance and that um, we give them to meeting to come into compliance. All right, Mr. Gonzalez made motion. I'll okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, opposed it. Okay. Um, January Ms. 6th. Stop it. January 6th. 6th. 2021. You have until January the 6th, 21, to come into compliance. Well, and would you please get in touch with Mr. Clegg, and he will explain okay. the non Well, like I explained, I might not be able to might not be able to have it done by then. I mean, this financial thing. Yeah. Work with Mr. Clegg on that, and yeah, I'll, yeah. he'll I'll, be able I'll, to tell you what you need to do in terms when of when you get the when you, when you okay. actually get a deed, that you bought the house, give a copy, get a copy to us. Okay. Okay. When you actually own the place, get us a copy of the deed. Okay. We, we all Thank done? you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Case number thirty. 
CEB 10-20-199, Rudine W. Davis. Rudine W. Davis, 868 Magnolia Avenue. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Clegg, please. Yes, ma'am. This is a complaint driven call, and um, as you can see, the pictures of the roof was, uh, is uh, in need of repair. and. Uh, the tarp's been on that roof for almost a year. Went by the house, tried to uh, locate, um, you know, uh, some more tenants or something. And this last picture last week when I posted it, it uh, appears abandoned. I uh, talked to a neighbor, I think the officer, our manager Sykes, uh, uh, talked to someone too that they believed the property was going to be sold. So uh, this is the first time known of the owner right now. I, I, could, I think I talked, yeah, I did talk to her when the violation first came across, and okay. she did say she was trying to sell it. So. But right now it's non-compliance. Okay. Miss <clears throat> Miss Davis? Yes? What do you have to tell us? Well, I, do, I did have a contract for sale for the building. But there was a, we were supposed to close on it Tuesday, last Tuesday, but there was a snag. And so uh, they are asking me to ask for a little delay. Um, the, I, I didn't know that um, somebody had been by, first I knew that somebody had probably been by the house was when I got the uh, letters in the mail. I got one from the city code enforcement and I got one from the police department. Okay. But I've been in my house since the pandemic started because I have asthma. So I don't know. But um, the person who is purchasing the house, I have the paperwork right here. Uh, purchasing the apartment building uh, is asking for a little delay. He's still interested in buying the building. In fact, I have two other people interested in buying the building. But since I'd already signed the contract with him uh, through a um, professional title company down on Ridgewood, uh, we are asking just for a little delay. Yeah, okay. Are there any questions from the board? Uh, yes, I have one for the inspector. So I'm reading here, it says, first notified, sorry, my glasses fog up, 9 2018. Yep. And I'm seeing it right that it's for the same violation? Yeah, same violation, same tarp. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Ma'am, uh, why are they asking you for us to delay it? Because they are purchasing the building as is. You know. Uh, well, uh, as is, it's going to come with a fine unless you pay for it. Well, I've done everything I can do. I just don't know anything else to do other than uh, I've had somebody to go out and look at the roof. Um, but they can't, they don't want to be bothered with it. So I, I still need to find somebody else to, I I, I, I'm willing to do it, but I just have to have, because I didn't know anything about this until I got these. Uh -huh. So I'm trying to figure out why they're asking for the delay. One way or they're, the other, they're going to have to fix the roof. It's just well, a question right. of who pays for it. Because they are asking me to ask for a delay because they are purchasing the building as is. Okay. And they would be willing to make the repairs and all that kind of stuff. Do you know when, when they can, with the glitch that happened, when they'll be able to purchase it? Is it going to be November? Any idea? I, I really don't have an idea, but I'm hoping it's before December anyway. 
So when did you find out you had this, this problem? Because evidently you've known for a while or they wouldn't be asking you to delay it. I beg your pardon? When did you become aware of this particular uh, problem, this, this violation? When I got these. What, what is the date of that? Uh, I got one. This one is from um, the police department. I got that one on the 24th. Of what month? September. And I got September. this one on the 22nd of September. Okay. One came uh, certified mail and one came regular mail. So how long has the contract been effect? Uh, we started the contract on July. Wait a minute. The third, 2020. Okay. So there was there was a violation that you didn't disclose to them because you didn't know it. I didn't know it. Okay. Are there any other questions? I just want to ask, Mr. Flee. Yes, sir. We're only asking for compliance. Right. Not compliance, right. 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 Yeah. This goes from 2018. Right. She signed for the green card in 920 of 18. Right. It seems the, the, it's two years for just compliance and non-compliance. This is the case. It fell through the cracks. It was my fault. Uh, mm -hmm. So I would like to make a motion that uh, we find this case non-compliance and uh, provide 30 days uh, for far to come into compliance. Did you say 90 days? 30 days. 30 days. Okay. 30 days. 11 yes, 30 for days. 20, 20. Second. Okay. Is there Did he second? Mr. Harrington, I think, second. Mr. Har okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Ms. Davis, you have uh, until November the 4th to come into compliance. That's December 4th. You can get with Mr. Clegg and he'll explain everything else to you. Okay. Did she? Case number 31, CEB 10-20-194. Alfred L. Simmons. He's here. State your name and address, please. Uh, Alfred Simmons, 1306 Fifth Street, Daytona Beach, Florida 32117. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. We're here for Mr. Simpson now. Uh, good morning. How you doing? The, uh, this property remains in non-compliance. The uh, only thing is left is for him to, uh, I guess, reconstruct the carport. The, uh, the painting has been corrected. The vehicles have been registered. So we're saying non-compliant. Next, got off. The roof been, uh, is fixed? The roof was uh, pertaining to the carport, and the carport's been completely removed. Oh, okay. Are there any questions from the board? Did I get a motion non-compliance next cut off? I thought he did. Okay. Mr. Simmons? Yes, ma'am. Do you have anything to say? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. Motion? Non-compliant and then come into compliance by November 4th. Mm -hmm. Second. Mr. Simmons, you yep. have until November the 4th to come into compliance. Yes, vote. And please stay in touch with Mr. Stenson. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Uh-huh. Thank you. Thank you. Case number 32, CEB 10-20-198, Clyde D. Baumgartner, Sr. Respondent is not present. Not present. Thank you. 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 Thank
not present. Okay, Mr. Stinson. Uh, good morning. There is some progress being made on the property. My last inspection out there was on the 6th. Um, junk vehicles have been removed. <clears throat> he has begun pressure washing the exterior walls. The window has been repaired. Uh, some of the outside storage has been removed. He still needs to finish his fascia boards and finish painting and maintaining that landscaping. So, so we're saying non-compliance next cutoff. Okay. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Is 11 4. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Good. Case number 33, CEB 10 20 184. Abdulzi Holhals. And he's not here to hear you. It's so. <laughs> a good thing he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Garcia. Uh, Inspector Garcia uh, with the City of Daytona Beach credentials on file. Uh, this is a vacant lot. That's uh, between North uh, Ridgewood and North Seagrave. Um, it's a lot that has been uh, uh, created a, a lot of uh, issues with transients, overgrown grass, bushes, hedges. Uh, we had transient issues, homeless issues. They were um, residing in there. Um, it involved uh, calling uh, Captain Lee, law enforcement out, um, police out, and also the uh, code manager Denzel Sykes, uh, where we had to call someone out from the city to um, assess all the issues and, and uh, having them come out and having to remove all of this um, mm -hmm. debris and trash and overgrowth, uh, which they had done so, but after that, it's now um, overgrown again. So uh, we're asking for, right, as of now, just not compliance next cutoff, but um, just to keep in mind, we got an absentee landlord. We had no contact, so it's going to be coming the next board, the same issue. Is there a bill for the previous uh, cleanup uh, pending? Uh, yes. Okay, is that? He's got to come by his consulting. So we need to make sure that they pay that. Uh... Well, you're, that that's a separate process. Oh. That, that the utility, I mean, the uh, public works department sends an invoice or invoices the property owner. It goes through a process and then ultimately can be assessed to the property tax okay. appraiser's but office. Is, is, is there the that, what was that thing that we have that if it happens again, they get fined? Yeah. We'll find. The You're not talking about a compliance. violation? Don't we have to find them after we have to give them the... Right. All, we're here, uh, all we're here for is uh, order not compliance because compliant. they're back... The, the issue here in summary is is that we had to abate the problem once because it became uh, a safety issue. There were some issues with uh, hypodermic needles and mm -hmm. things like that going on, on the property. We abated the issue, but the issue then has reoccurred again because there it's a non-responsive property owner. Um, so we're just here for an order of non-compliance, and then we'll we're hoping they'll come into compliance by next month. But we're probably not. Occupied. Move for non-compliance next yeah. cutoff. Correct. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Gonzalez, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I have a question, if I may. In these type of situations, a lot of these people, besides just being transients, they're also homeless people. Do they get some kind of information where they can go, get some help, usually, that sort of thing? Yeah, usually... Um, Usually the team that works on these types of projects is Officer Lamp outside and our primordial policing unit. Um, when we're in contact with these individuals, if they, qual if they meet criteria for service or are requesting service, then we connect into those services, yes. Um, not everybody wants to be involved in those services, but we do have that. Um, and if there's a uh, substance abuse issue uh, or a, med a mental issue related to Baker Act or Marchman Act, then we address those issues as well by connecting them to sources or taking them into protective custody if necessary. Great. Thank you. Yep. Case number 34, CEB 10-20-187, Carl E. 
and Teresa Cecil is in compliance as of 10 6 20. Case number 35, CEV 10 20 191, Dorothy Mayhew. State your name and address, please. Dorothy Mayhew. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we're here for Mr. Garcia. Okay, the, the property, uh, 410 Henry Butch Drive, is, was um, generated by a code walk. Uh, it's a vacant property, um, not occupied. Uh, I spoke to Ms. Mayhew um, a couple of times while doing reinspections. Um, I explained the violations. She explained that um, she's going through the Volusia County for some assistance. Um, it is still in non-compliance and we're asking for the next cutoff. Uh, I have the, uh, the Volusia County um, send me a letter stating that the assistance they're giving her. Uh, they're, they're saying that they need a second uh, inspection to verify whether repairs will be made or if they're going to go for demolishing. Okay. Okay. Danny, did they say whether that would be able to happen within the next 30 days? Um, I believe it says in there, uh, Not really. but I don't, I don't think it's... Give it to Joan if you would when you finish. Okay. Ms. Mayhew, would you like to tell us? I mean, would you like to say anything? Well, yes. Uh, I'm Dorothy Mayhew. I reside, well, I don't reside there, but my home is 410 Henry Butts Drive. And uh, I don't know when the house will be uh, finished or even get started on. I'm. Uh, with, uh, what is it called, Rebuild Florida. Also, the community services over in Deland, uh, Rebuild Florida, I have had several numbers for them and uh, I haven't been able to contact them. The last time I heard from them uh, was in August. I had, they sent me forms to take my doctor uh, so that she can fill them out. And she did, and she faxed them back. My doctor faxed those papers back on August the 17th, and uh, which I have a copy of that here if you need that. And uh, so I haven't heard anything else from them. The last I heard from them was to get those papers to the doctor. Before that, uh, they were saying that they had to have another inspection, which I found out that community services, apparently they work together, I guess. But um, I've... Uh, had the yards cleaned up. On my papers that I've gotten from the city uh, was that the uh, windows was broken, which is not true. And uh, they are boarded up. The windows are not broken. I had them boarded up to keep them from being broken because of where I live. People sit over in the park. And I said to the inspector Garcia that I, uh, wasn't going to take them down because of that. They would be in there like they did the house next to me before it was torn down. They would go in there and smoke crack and smoke weed and they would live in the place and they just vandalized the place. I plan on going back to my home. That's why I have my windows up. I don't have money to repair the house. So why would I take down the boards from the window so people can vandal uh, break, in the win break the windows up go in the house, live in there, it's already a mess, and uh, end up burning, burning the house down or doing whatever they want to do. It don't make sense to me. And for as the side, um, the side door, it was saying need to be fixed, yes, right there. The side door, need, the screen door need to be fixed. Well, they had told me when they came out to do the inspection, rebuild floor, not rebuild floor, community service inspector, well, it's no use in you fixing that door because we're going to, from what I see now, you will be getting some type of assistance, hopefully, she said. But it don't make sense to fix that. And we have to come in and do other stuff because where that door is there, 
the wooden door is swollen up. It's not, it don't even lock. So, uh, because the, the floor of it is swollen up, especially when it rains, so it doesn't even lock. So she said, just let us come in and do our inspection. I was waiting for the second inspection. The second inspection happened um, two weeks ago on Friday. So I called, uh, uh, what's the name? Miss Peterson, Lisa Peterson, over at the community services yesterday to see had they, you know, uh, done anything or what's, what, what was the deal. So she said the inspector had not turned in his report as of yet. They were waiting on him to see what he's going to do. And once they get that, then they can let me know more. Okay, so I then. Let us hear what Captain Scott. Pardon me? Oh. Captain Scott, if we could. Uh, yes, ma'am. I just wanted to point out a few. I know we had a case similar than that, similar to this earlier today, mm -hmm. and I just want to point out a few differences here. This is a letter from a county employee. Her name is Lisa, Lisa Peterson. She's a uh, project coordinator of housing. Um, it, in, in specifically in this letter, it's requesting that we give more time for them to work through the process of establishing a scope of work, mm -hmm. and. Um, and obtaining program eligibility, and they would like to do that before uh, a lien is imposed. So the, the county government appears to be assisting her, or at least through this process, and is requesting that we give um, some time for them to work through that process. And this letter was dated on the second or 22nd of September of this year. Um, so it does seem like they are engaged in assistance. And what I'm going to have the inspector do is reach directly out to this person just to verify the reality of what's going on in this property before next meeting and try to work that out. And if we run into any hurdles where we've got to work through releases and stuff, we'll communicate with uh, the, the property owner. But we're not here for any fines. We're yeah, here for non-compliance. Right. Non that's, that's, yeah, absolutely. Connects cut off. That's what you're So asking. I would make a motion with that, uh, <clears throat> that we find on this case in non-compliance and give them till January meeting. I have it. Till the Can January. January, January oh, next sorry. cutoff. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Good for you. You said January, right? Yes, ma'am. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Ms. Mayhew, you have until January 6th to come into compliance. And please stay in touch with Mr. Garcia. All right. Okay. So you said January the 6th. So what does that mean? By January the 6th, everything has to be done that, right. that's on that list? Or you have to right, or you have to come back to us with some proof of what's oh, been what? done and what when is to be completed. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Vote yes. I'm done? Thank you. Case number 36, CEB 10 20 188. Coderre, the vendor Carver, Carder. In compliance? It's in compliance 10 2 20. Uh, case number 37 is CEB 10 20 189. And Tololi Remy is in compliance as of 9 30. 20. Case number 38, CEB 10 20 190, Daniel and Kimberly Phillips. Was already heard. That was the first. Yeah, that we was heard. the Zoom. Yes. Um, thank you. Okay. Case number 39, CEB 10 20 186, Eric N. Stack. Respondents not present. The property is in non-compliance, asking it to come into compliance by next cutoff. The uh, permit was reissued. Permit started in uh, 3 9 2016 and uh, has been reissued till 2 16 2021. Okay. But as you can see, the permit doesn't give him the ability to park cars, overgrown grass, outside stores, trash and debris, and everything else I wrote him up for. What was the year on that per first permit? 16? Yeah, 3 9 2016. Three years before the complaint. 
Yeah. Well, it was ongoing work, and then it got worse and worse. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, so you're recommending non-compliance next cutoff. Okay. I'll make the motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Case number 40, CEB 10-20-193, George Hafford. Hafford. State your name and address, please. State your name and Good morning. Uh, George Caffery. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. We're here for Mrs. Kirk. Okay. Um, Thank you. Uh, this was a case that I obtained from a code walk. I posted the property in January of 19. Um, I did, I had no contact uh, up until this past week where I was left two voicemails and I, I did call Mr. Cafferty back, but it, I wasn't able to leave a message. Um, there has been a lot of progress. I went by the property yesterday, so I am expecting compliance by the next cutoff. So I'd like uh, just an order of non-compliance to the next cutoff. Okay, Mr. Cafferty. Do you have anything to tell us? Oh, the work has been finished. I could uh, email the inspector the pictures. I just, the officer just gave me her card with her email on it. Mm -hmm. I can come by tomorrow and do an inspection. I was there yesterday and I saw you've done quite a bit. So I can come back uh, tomorrow and see if I can close the case. There was just a couple, like uh, some of the soffit. This is a picture from yesterday. So some of the soffit is still um, missing or buckled right there. I see where you've painted the uh, bare surfaces and removed the dirt and grime. And then the, the vehicle parked right there on the grass can't be parked there. Oh, I have the, um, the finished paid in full contract okay. if you need it. Um, uh, I, okay. I can come by tomorrow and I will give you a call. Sure, I'll have to tell the tenant that they can't park there. Okay. Okay. So it's non-compliance, next cut off, Ms. Kurt. Okay, yes. Second. Okay. Moved and second, all in favor? Aye. Mr. Cafferty, you have until 11 for to come into compliance. Oh, okay, yeah, it's, it's, as far as I know, everything's been complied except for I gotta move the, the truck. Okay. okay, thank you so much. No, thank you for your understanding. Okay. Thank you. Case number 41, CEB 10-20-195, Ted Russell. Russell, Jr. Uh, this property is remains in noncompliance. I spoke with the owner yesterday and uh, they're planning on having the property in compliance and having the vehicles towed. Uh, so I'm asking for an order of non-compliance to the next cutoff. Okay. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. okay, case number 42, CEB 10-20-192 is mean, and that was a non-compliance earlier, the attorneys. Yes, case. ma'am. Yep. Case number 43, CEB 10-20-196, Victor and Agnes Ingram. No, the respondent's not here. Okay. okay. Uh, this property, I haven't had any contact from the owner. A friend of the owner contacted me in May of 2020 and said that he would, was working to bring the property into compliance, but nothing has been done. Uh, so I'm asking for an order of non-compliance to the next cutoff. Second. All in there on that side of the road? It, it's, no, actually it's been removed. Okay, <laughs> All in favor? 
Uh, okay. okay. Are there any questions? Yeah, I want to just. I, I provided uh, June with a copy of the City of Palm Bay case, the Code Enforcement Board case, with the Supreme Court. Very easy reading. You'll enjoy reading it. And I'm sure I'll get you a copy of each of the cases. Mm -hmm. Basically, what it said was it basically said the city of Palm Bay passed an ordinance trying to let their code liens overtake or be more 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 uh, important than the mortgage liens. You know, the mortgage liens came first, and they said no, you can't do that. Supreme Court said no, code enforcement liens are still subject to tax liens, IRS liens, and mortgage liens. And it would have been nice if Palm Bay had succeeded, but unfortunately, they didn't. But I brought you the case. You know what? We don't very often get cases from the Supreme Court. They're on the code board. This was one, and I thought you'd enjoy reading it. Okay. Thank you. So you're going to send it? Yeah, I'm going to send you copies. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I have one thing. I, I was asked this, and um, I just thought I'd, I'd just bring it up, ask the question of, of um, Charlie, of, of Mr. Sino. Uh, one of the powers of the board is, is a subpoena power, and uh, we had an issue to, to, today where we were asking for documents and an individual to appear and so forth. And so there was just a thought, of, was it a situation where we thought exercising the subpoena power would be effective? I can tell you over the last 20 years, I've only seen this exercise at once. It, it hasn't been very, very effective from a co an administrative board, but I just... You had that authority to do that. Yeah, but that authority is there. I didn't, by the, you know, signed by the you're chair. saying if you don't do it, it doesn't work. Well, That's what you're saying. You only did it once, so... Well, once in a 20, I've been don't here. Do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's funny, we don't do that. We very rarely do one of those. Yeah, that's why I was to ask. So I know you one, do various counties. Okay, yeah. So it's, it's something that's still very rare, even at the other jurisdictions as well. It seems to me when you've got somebody that's going back two and three years and they keep talking about documents and they never appear and we never see them, that maybe uh, that would be a nice time to. To well, do that. You, well, you know, I didn't. I took out some of the stuff, but I, I don't know. Maybe it was just me, but I thought on one of those cases that we had actually seen the document where they were in the process. They had acknowledged that they would do the house. Okay, I didn't want to go into too much depth of, of facts of cases, yeah. but just in general, I mean, because actually even in the case that did still arise, I guess we could um, make a staff decision to ask for, to have what, whatever information is opinion, or would that come from the board? Mm -hmm. Whatever, either way is fine. Okay, yeah. so that, that's something we can talk about as a staff and see if it's something yeah. we can. Let me say, just, I just know that Poncilla just issued one a couple of months ago. If you need anybody, if you need a copy of one to, okay. we need to get down to June, just call Dave Hooker. And possibly just issue a subpoena okay. in the case mm -hmm. about a month ago. So yeah, something we can consider. Dave Hooker. Okay. He's the president of the uh, Lucia County uh, Code Enforcement Board. Okay. Hooker. Yeah. And, and I can't, I would, don't, don't have anything else from me. Okay. I would like to say I'm sure that all our hearts and prayers go right. out to Ouija okay. on the loss of her husband, and we're praying for him. If she calls, or we want to give us some time, but if she calls, we'll be there for. Her. I'm sure all of us feel that way. Okay? And I will, I will say, when June called me, I was not coming. I left the hospital, and I still think something is wrong. I have a headache. You wouldn't believe. I took a BC powder and praying, pumping to be here. Good job, but, Yeah, but. That's right. Good job, good job, good job, good job today. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. I think it's been from stress. But they said that they've been...